point I'm not seeing. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Okay, you guys are all set for the meeting. Hi, Eva. Hi. Hi, Shirley. How are you? Good, good. Good. That's the baby. He's good. He'll be turning three tomorrow. My goodness, does time fly pretty soon? He'll be going to college. <laughs> <laughs> Not too fast. <laughs> Have a good evening. You too. Right. Bye. Bye. We're going to get started in just a few minutes, everybody. We're just waiting for a couple uh, of community board members. I think we're good to go. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Ely. Uh, I, I'll be chairing tonight's uh, SLA Community Board Two SLA uh, meeting, our number two meeting of the week. Um, and uh, I'll, I chair the, the committee along with Donna Rafferty, who's 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 also here tonight, along with Brian, other members of our committee: Brian Pape, Susan Kent, Katie Bordenaro, Dr. Shirley Smith and uh, Mar Fitzgerald. Uh, I expect there'll be maybe a few more people join us, but we have enough to start uh, and we're gonna move forward. Uh, just, to, just in terms of how this is done on the technological front, uh, we have an agenda. Uh, I'm sure Donna is, will post it in the chat. Um, the agenda is also, along with all the applications uh, that will be heard tonight, uh, questionnaires and such, uh, posted on our website, our Community Board 2 website as well, uh, so you can reference things there. Um, the way it's going to work procedurally uh, tonight is that uh, I will call each application individually. That's not going to be in order. Uh, there's a number of applications that were put over from last month to this month. Uh, they will go first, uh, and then I'll try to move down the line as quickly as I can. Um, one thing uh, that you so so Generally, we'll, we'll call the application. Uh, you need to raise your Zoom hand so that we can then uh, bring you up to be, be a panelist. So that's anyone on the application itself. Uh, and then after we have an opportunity to ask questions uh, from the committee, uh, uh, there's a presentation that takes place. 
Uh, we will give everyone an opportunity from the public, whether you're for or against a particular application, uh, uh, or you just want to make comment, uh, uh, that opportunity will exist um, uh, shortly thereafter. I'll, I'll then uh, let everybody know to raise your hand, uh, and then we will bring you up as a panelist as well. Uh, uh, what we ask is that everybody uh, be friendly, uh, use uh, proper language, and um, uh, and be considerate to others. Uh, despite the fact that I know that uh, this is means a lot, and sometimes people can get very passionate about the subject. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'll move forward with the first item. Um, first item is going to be something that we heard last uh, last month: Hudson Square Services. Uh, in apology events. This is 75 Barrack Street, 18th floor. It's a rooftop venue. If you're here on that application, if you could please raise your hand, we'll bring you up. And uh, I guess there's someone in the chat saying they can't see themselves. Yes, you're not. If you're not a panelist, you're not going to be able to be seen. All right. That's what happens when we call each application. So when your application is called, we'll bring you up to be a panelist and you will have that opportunity uh, to see and be seen. Um, OK, uh, so. Uh, do, I think we got everybody up Looks that way. Um, so, so uh, since the last meeting, we a number of the committee board members went to visit the location, and um, so so go ahead, uh, Barbara, if you want to take the lead here, um, and um, just I, I believe everybody on the committee was here. Well, actually, one committee member was not here last month. So, if you could give a, a brief overview of the application as well, thank you. This is an application um, that is being submitted by two co-licensees, Hudson Square Services LLC, uh, the landlord, as well as Apogee Events. Um, it's for the 18th floor tenant amenity space of 75 Varick, which includes a rather large terrace. Um, the location of the building is between Canal and Watt Streets. Um, Apogee is an experienced caterer and events company, most notably the owner and operator of Tribeca Rooftop, which has operated 24 years without incident or issue. Um, we are applying for a catering establishment license. This is not going to be open to the public. Its focus is primarily on tenant events, corporate events, uh, cocktail parties, maybe the occasional wedding. Although I know a lot of the committee members who attended the walkthrough recognize the awkwardness of the space that it would most likely be corporate events and uh, launches of the type. Um, it's primarily a tenant amenity space during the day. They would just like to have the um, option and flexibility to be able to have evening events when requested by uh, members of the community, most likely tenants. Um, I'd like to point out that this space has been open and operational since 2020, just without a uh, license. They had one day permits for events that required it. Um, we submitted quite a bit of materials, um, supporting documentation from specialists that we engaged. There was an extensive amount of outreach that was done to the local community. And I believe that you know our presentation was, was pretty comprehensive last time. We just, we recognize that it, it would benefit the committee to actually see this space as well. Um, we're happy to answer any other questions that there may be, you know, the, uh, Hours of operation that we're seeking are 8 to 12, Monday through Thursday, 8 to 1 uh, Friday, 10 to 1 Saturday, and 10 to 12 on Sunday. Great, Barbara. One of the things, the initial things is Community Board 1, did they did they come and visit uh, the location? No, we, we had reached out a few times. We never heard from anyone, and no one visited the location. OK. Um, then, it, then in terms of the, the 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 use of sound or sound systems on the rooftop, uh, there the 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 um, you know we did hear it when we we're up there, and right. there there is a sound report, and at least in terms of stipulations, you know the stipulation is background music, but it's going to be pursuant to the uh, you know the terms or at least uh, all the conditions or or recommendations. Uh, that were provided by Acousalog. And so that that would be embedded into the uh, 
into the stipulations. I just want to make sure that you that that makes sense to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, applicants are more than welcome to join in and unmute themselves. But my understanding is all of the recommendations made by Acousta Law will be incorporated into our method of operation. Okay, and so. There, there, there was a distinction that was made by Acoustic Log in, in the recommendations for the interior and the exterior. So the Correct. interior music has it's it, it not necessarily a separate sound system, but it's a set it's a, it's got a separate it's a separate connection. Or, or you may have one amplifier that that amplifies both sound systems, but the systems are separate. And yes. as a result of them being separate, you can have different. Uh, it can be monitored in, in a different way. That that's Correct. at least. The decibels and, and how loud things can get. Right. right. I just that that then uh, in terms of so so on the application it actually says live music. So I just want to make sure that we have an understanding of what that live music is. Yeah. So um, I'll address the outside first. Um, when uh, we discuss this application, live music outside would be a string quartet, a small trio, you know, during happy hours if necessary. But no matter what the music or uh, origin of music on the terrace, the level will always be that of background. Okay, so you know it would, the stipulation really include no bands outside, no horns, no drums, and unless uh, I hear differently from my clients that are on, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and then on the interior, when the music levels, I mean, it really doesn't, you know, the the acoustic doesn't really go into. Uh, it, it almost assumes that the inside is is somewhat background. So, but your plan is to have, you know, so so doors and windows have to be closed anytime there's music above background level. Correct. Doors um, will always be closed. As you witness, there's really only one set of doors that are used, and that will be uh, monitored by security to make sure it's always closed when the level of sound is is greater than background for music. Yeah, and I, I guess. It seems to me if they're big doors, then you know you have an alternative way to go for people to get in and out uh, rather than the big doors. Um, you know, so a lot of times the acoustic will have an, a foyer or a vestibule uh, set up uh, to prevent noise from you know getting outside. So I'm just saying that. So there, would, you know, I guess there would have to be an alternative way for people to get in and out if the music is 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 higher levels inside. That's all. Okay. Um, okay, and just to clarify, uh, the nighttime use is, is open to the public. So, I mean, that was a, that was somewhat, I think there was some confusion about that before. So, no, yeah. and it's, but the reality is, is this is going to be open to the public at night, at least in terms of catering event. Well, I guess um, it's sort of a semantic difference, especially with licensing. Um, it's not open to the public in that anyone, just because it's open doesn't mean anyone from the street could walk in um, and enter the premises. It, it is, it is bookable, if that's a word. It's, you know, you can reserve the space um, that's subject to review by the operators and the licensees as to whether or not they're going to allow the booking. And I guess in that manner, anyone from the public could book the space, but it's not a space that is, you know, walk up and, and come on in um, just because we're open. Um, the bookings would be, yeah. It's, it's essentially catering. Uh, Correct. Bob, it can't be open to the public, period. Yeah. No, no, I understand no. that. What I mean by open to the public is it's not just the tenants. It's not restricted to the tenants. Correct. The building. Okay. Correct. That's yeah. what I meant by open to the public. So, I, anyway. Although okay. we envision it'll most most likely be tenants because no one really knows about the space um, other than the tenants. Okay. All right, uh, I'll open it up to other committee members. If you have questions, um, we certainly can discuss things uh, in, in our uh, business meeting, uh, at least in terms of what people observed up on the rooftop, but uh, from our own committee, but go ahead. Right. Again, Donna, I have, a. am using my iPad, I cannot see Okay, Katie. sorry. So Katie has her hand up and then Carter has his hand up. Thank you. Uh, I figure when people go to the top level, they are. Okay, go ahead, Katie. Okay, thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I just wanted to be sure that the music on the outside terrace is only going to be acoustic. That, and that, with that is going to be written down. Is that what you said, Barbara? Only acoustic music on the terrace? I didn't specify acoustic because I, I, I have to be honest with you. I don't know what acoustic necessarily entails. You know, acoustic guitar, 
a string trio, um, if there's someone from the applicant group that is aware of the classification of music that, you know, you're more than welcome to chime in. But what yeah. I can say for sure, Katie, is that it will be background level, whatever it is, like not um, like a band level. Yeah, well, well, what our steps usually say are when we say acoustical, we say, you know, no, no, uh, you know, no drums, no, no horns. Uh, and like a, a trio would be string quartet, uh, and perhaps a piano. Uh, and, um, you know, in terms of vocals, um, you know, it, it would be without amplification is really what uh, I think. And, is, and the uh, instruments too, without amplica amplification, right, Bob? Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's what we're talking about when we're, when we're speaking of like a background music type of situation. Well, that's the way we do it uh, pretty much. Uh, for everyone in that scenario. I just want okay. to make sure everybody knows that, okay? That okay, Katie? That's okay, but do, are they, do the applicants understand that distinction? Yes, I mean, I, that, that's fine with us. Okay, all right. It doesn't mean, okay, it right. doesn't mean it's not restricting you on the inside, that's the only restriction on the outside for live music, okay? All right, so go ahead, Carter. Yeah, I'm just confused. Where else do we have live music outside? Are you asking us? Question for you, or question for you Bob. I, I'm, we, I'm not aware of any establishments in CB2 that have live music outside. Nope, I don't either. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how that's approvable in being consistent with what's been described to us because we were told that the only speakers outside would be the speakers that are installed in the walls. Uh, during the walkthrough, we, we did discuss how it's common during happy hours to have, or like during a cocktail portion of an event, that there could be like a string trio, um, an acoustic guitarist. Um, I, sure, th I those are all no speakers, but right. that's not, you know, this, this needs to be described much more thoroughly in order to have music outside. I mean, the, the, the what's been described, it will be a problem down the road uh, if there's anything, because there's no definition, there's no decibel level of what's the difference between background music and not background and the subjective nature of everybody's idea of what that is, is just gonna lead to problems down the road in, you know, including for example, oh, it's it's an acoustic guitar, but it's electric and we have an amplifier. Oh, you can't hear the singer. So we, we now have a separate amplifier for the vocals. Suddenly it morphs and it becomes something different. And that's why, you know, without really very specific distinctions on what is what, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, this is the only establishment that has live music again outside. And I'm not sure what you've done to have any of that privilege or description because it's so loose that it, it will be a problem down the road. And, and you know, the, the parameters that we just define here are the future of the space and, and where it goes. And it's very unlikely to have it go backwards. And, you know, I, I know that, that, um, that you don't think that this space will be uh, run in a way because of the 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 uh, in a way that would be bothersome to your tenants, but you know that's what we heard from the hotel industry 15 years ago, and now the roof hotel rooftops are a big source of noise throughout New York City because that is now an income stream and cash flow for the buildings, and this is a very nice large rooftop with the view and its opportunity to, to become more desirable is certainly there. So, you know, if you guys have a way of, of describing that music, I'd love to hear it, but- yeah, Can I jump in? Is, sure. I, I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to be very clear because that, that's not what we're saying. And that's not what we said at the walkthrough. We're saying tonight and what we said, you know, two weeks ago was if the music on the roof, on the outside and the exterior terrace is a string quartet, it's not gonna be amplified. There's not gonna be speakers used. When the speakers are used, that is only through a different you know, sound system, like, and it's only gonna be background music. So if there's ever live music on the terrace, it's never gonna be amplified. We're never gonna have live a live singer or an electric guitar up to a speaker. 
we've been very clear about that. We've, we haven't said the, what you're explaining. So I just want to make sure that there's no confusion here. Separately, I know you said this at our walkthrough, we're not compromising what we're saying. This is a, this is a, a, a large joint venture with a commercial office portfolio. We're not chasing like little concerts to compromise what we're telling you in this application. I don't, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but we didn't, we never said that. Why well, I, I didn't suggest you said it. I said, that's what will happen. It's just like the hotel industry. But, but why do you think that will happen? I, I, that's what I'm, I'm, we're having a hard time understanding. We're telling you right now that we're not going to allow that. Okay. I mean, I, I just, you're operating a business and the, the priority of a business is to make money. I don't think that your evening events in, in a, on a rooftop are impactful to the businesses that are in the building. And, you know, the same way you're saying this to us is the same thing. Absolutely not. We will never have music in our hotels because it will bother the guests. And, I you know, think the nature of a hotel and a commercial office building are, are quite different. I don't, 75 Varick is not meant to be the next hot spot, you know, hanging yeah. over the Holland Tunnel. It's not, I, I understand that it's often that folks step before the community board and say one thing and then eventually do something else or they get desperate. But this is a, this is a very different beast than a hotel. I represent hotels as well. I, and I've spoken to the clients quite a bit about this. It's not a moneymaker for them by any means. And it's not meant to be. It's a tenant amenity space. That, that seeks the flexibility of having corporate events in the evening, um, no intention of being open to the public or being, you know, the next destination. I mean, I, and hopefully those that attended the walkthrough recognize that that space is, is what it is. It's not meant to be any of those things. I, I, I can't see part of I don't know if your hand is still up or if you're done, I just want to. But I, I just, I mean, I, I haven't seen anything, you know, that needs to be described in such a way that they're not problems. So, you know, that I, I, you know, whatever that language is, I think that that's what's important here because that, right. that the music outside is what. We're happy to stipulate, you know, in, in detail, you know, and I'm happy to work with the officer or review whatever drafts or proposed language, but, you know, um, string quartets, acoustic, non-amplified uh, voice, if ever voice, which I'll talk to the client about, I believe they said no voice. Um, speakers are only used for, you know, background level music. We can get into the weeds of it, so to speak, and get into the detail um, if that satisfies the committee. We're happy to do it. Uh, that, that's right. And just to, just to support that, I mean, again, this is the use is to our office tenants like we they're going to have you know a, a, occasional events and gatherings where they want to have alcohol served and if they ask for anything that we're telling you now is a non-starter we're just going to tell them no and we're not going to compromise that like this is not a hotel this is not our money maker as i explained to you guys on site this is a, not i don't i mean this is just very small revenue Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith, thank you. Uh, I, I just uh, I don't want to say the same thing Carter said because he said it so eloquently. We do not, as a committee, have a, a, a grant people music the roof, and no matter how it you you describe it, in my estimation, I've been on the committee for a while. So I want to ask you, Doug, is that something you guys your your business can live without? I think we can consider it. I mean, I don't have right now, I can't list a number of properties in Community Board 2 that have it, but I know of several of the properties very nearby in Community Board 1 that are allowed to do this, and they have not had one complaint in over like two plus decades. So I just, we can consider it, but again, I just, I'm not sure why this is being so contentious given it's not being amplified and we're surrounded by the Holland Tunnel and commercial buildings. Well, I don't think contentious is the right word to use. It's just something, it's, it's been our history to, to that, that it causes problems for the neighbors. It, it, it can be problematic. Of course, you can decide on whether you want to go ahead and have it, but I am saying to you, I don't think it's a smart move. Thank okay. You. Uh, Donna, do you have your hand up? Go ahead. 
I had my hand up. I just wanted to second what Dr. Smith said because we've done this, um, not allowed music on rooftops in community board two consistently. And once we make an exception at one place, regardless of what the stipulations are, the next person wants the same thing. So I just wanna put that out there that the music outside on rooftops, on terraces has been a, a fight we've been having with everybody and not allowed it to my knowledge, any place. So I just wanted to put that out there as another person saying that to you. And Katie has her hand up. I, I just wanna point out- before, Then I'll let you guys respond. Go ahead, Katie. I just want to point out to the applicants that it's not only you, it's your space. And you know, we're 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 not only thinking about you, we may like you and think you're very responsible, but then that space has a certain history. Donna was talking about other spaces that might ask for the same thing, but we're also thinking about the, the what's going to happen in 10 years in that space, and we're concerned about that as well. Just so that you understand, you know, what we're thinking. It's it's it, it's it's you know bigger both in terms of time and in terms of place well i'm i'm billy riley and i have managed tribeca rooftop for 25 years and i do not have one complaint for noise from my roof from anybody ever ever so i i i have proven myself as a manager the only complaint that i have received in the past is about street traffic and i've managed that where there is nothing wrong with my operation, 100%. So proven that I've managed a rooftop facility with never a sound complaint ever, I, I think is a pretty big thing. I'm, I'm very sensitive to, hold on, hold no on, one has on, said it. Barbara, but, yeah, hold on, sure. Sure. Mr. Riley, just what, what's the address? I mean, you, you mentioned something, I just, where's the location? It's Tribeca rooftop. It's like right across the street. It's in community board one. I mean, it's been there for 25 years. It's one of the best places to get married or have a corporate event or a fundraiser. You know, we do a hundred fundraisers a year. We do large scale events. We have three floors of facilities. It, it's large, but it has an open roof deck. And I do not allow, you know, you too wanted to play there. I didn't allow it. I don't allow amplified large music during events and i've managed it for 25 years look at the if there's any um you know if there was ever a report of noise look it up there's none on record and, and mr riley that's an apology location apogee apogee, apogee. I apologize sorry. For sorry no no it's apogee it means top you know and and for for having a and and Tribeca rooftop is three, two sides. Half of the building is surrounded by neighbors and half of the building is surrounded by Canal Street and Hudson Street, which is commercial and the Holland Tunnel. Whereas you look at this space upstairs and it's 100% commercial around, but, but I just don't allow, I, I realize that I'm there every night or where they're operating every night. And I do not let one time operations come in you know, we have a consistent sound man and, and we pay attention. We know about our neighbors and we take care of the things that are important. That's that's really what we do. And I have a reputation for 25 years where I don't have one sound complaint ever. I think that should be a big thing for the board to consider. The only complaint that I've ever gotten is managing the street. And I have that under control for 25 years in business. Thank you, Mr. Riley. I think we, I think you made it pretty clear. I got you. Okay, thank you. No, no and, problem. And, and I wouldn't be one of the, one one last thing. I wouldn't be one of the best places to get married or have an event in New York City if I didn't know how to manage a business. I want to do, you know, parties. So I manage them in a way that keeps everybody happy. And I'm very respectful of my neighbors, my landlords, etc. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Miss Barbara, I cut, cut you off there. Go ahead. I, did, um, I just wanted to make a point that I, I am very sensitive to the committees. Nobody used the words, but the, the possibility of a slippery slope, right? You don't allow it. You allow it here. Um, what does that leave you with for future applications? But I also recognize that you don't tour every applicant's location either. You know, there there is an argument to be made that certain reviews or concepts are case by case because a space is exceptional or different and doesn't fit into a box. And so this isn't, 
you know, a bar or a lounge or a restaurant trying to have, a, you know, a lively roof deck or outdoor area. This is catering establishment, tenant amenity space that wants to be able to have background music that was demonstrated during the tour as being, I mean, I think we were all in agreement that it was unoffensive and um, that was the level that is intended to be played. And so I, I just wanted to point that out as well. We're not insensitive to um, the history of, you know, no music. It's just, this is a very exceptional circumstance. And I know that a lot of people try to make that argument, but I, I hope that the, the committee recognizes what this is here. Thank you. Thank okay, you. so uh, I, I need to open it up uh, to anyone from the public. Uh, Brian, do you have your hand up? No, okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna, if there's anyone from the public that would like to speak on this particular application, knowing that it was heard last month as well, I want, if you have any comments, please, you know, the, you know, make them uh, applicable to what we're discussing tonight, okay? So go ahead, I'll, I'll open it up. If anybody here from the public would like to speak on this application, please raise your hand. You have Darlene Lutz is up. Okay. Hi, everybody, happy new year. Go ahead, Darlene. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, nice to see you all. Uh, as you know, you know where I live. Um, and can everybody please stop trashing uh, where I live? Um, yeah, we have traffic at the Holland Tunnel. Uh, and, you know, that's noise. Uh, noise pollution is a thing. Um, just because there is noise from traffic doesn't mean we need to load on more. This has been my argument over the years. Uh, so the, the music, you know, my stance on music outdoors hasn't changed in 15 years from, you know, the James, now the Modern House Hotel, Gitano, um, a tenant of uh, Heinz's majority partner, Trinity Church Real, Trinity Church Wall Street, uh, which is right across the street. Um, I'm looking at the future. I don't see a problem in the next year with this space. I see a problem coming down the line if the parameters of how it's going to operate are not, are not agreed upon. And as long as the evident problems with having a huge event space, let's say you're having a wedding, 300 people, they're all coming by car. That presents a huge amount of traffic on the street, people coming and going at the same time. The music alone on the roof will amplify. I already have it documented. So, you know, can we all come together and recognize that there have to be there have to be some very very solid recognition of how you can operate the space profitably and and still uh, be a good neighbor. Thank you, Darlene. I, I, you know, I can, I can, you know, I think the hours are too long right now. And also, what is with the string quartet chatter? I have never heard string quartet mentioned in any SLA meeting ever. Okay. And suddenly we're talking about string quartets. Come on, 2023. The kids don't, you know, the kids don't listen to string quartet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think we got it. Okay. So, um, all right. Uh, there's nobody else, Donna. That's it, right? Okay. All right. So, so folks, I'll let, I'll let you respond if you'd like to. Um, uh, the, the, if you want to discuss uh, the, the live music portion, it seems to me that, that, that seems to be somewhat of a sticking point here. Uh, and uh, if you want to discuss that and get back to us, that's fine too, but I'll let you respond as well. Um, and but I need to move on to the next application. I think we we spent quite a bit of time on sure. this one already. And uh, but go ahead. Sure. Um, I would like to say maybe th that a good workaround could be let us operate it for a year with no music outside, and then 
if if a band is I, I think we're like misplacing if a band is inside but it's played through those little speakers and it's just background music if all the music is background level no matter where the band is outside inside but if the amplification at, should never go above what we can all determine on a decibel level what background music is it doesn't really matter whether the band's inside outside plugged in strings drums whatever it is the drums could be inside but it's plugged through if we can all agree on a decibel level and if we you know do the right thing for the first year maybe the decibel level gets raised five points or 0.5 or whatever i'm not being technical here but if we could all work out something like that that if we prove we're good operators yeah. that's what i that's a workaround i think everybody could live with well i, pre I appreciate the workaround uh, the, the problem is is that the live music is not doesn't go through a, you know in other words live music's outside so it's not going through a speaker system so there's no way to control to limit the sound levels whereas if, if, if you're right if there's music being played in the inside you could certainly limit that music on the outside if it's not being played outside except through speakers it is uh, still going all through a master board no matter where the band is right it but it's the live music the acoustical live music outside is not uh, that's that's not the time to do that so that, that's the difference but but are you are you you're saying that that you wouldn't have music on the um you, you're going to forego the music for one year is that what you're saying I, i'm not sure here I'll, I'll just jump in i'll make this super ahead, clear yeah. i'll make this super clear we, we will not have any live music outside for the first year okay if that's going to get everyone happy, I, I'm happy to address whatever everything else Darlene said. But you know, we all I would say is we had zero involvement with Gitano. We were not involved at all. We did not manage that, so I don't really want to give that any more airtime. Yeah, um, don't. Yeah, don't. But no I see, I see other hands up, so I will. Katie has her hand up. Okay. All right. Yes. I, I, of okay, course, I so, can't. Go. go yeah, hold thank on. You. So, Just, Katie, you know, before you go, Katie, before you go. Right. Just so clear. So if there's no music for one year, the, the, you would have to come back for an alteration. And Bar Barbara knows that. OK, I just want yeah, to make it would sure. be a change of method of operation that we'd have to okay. give you notif okay. notification That's fine. for. It. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. OK, That's fine. so, so now Katie has got her hand down. Donna, no, you I'm OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Just it's no music outside. And, and you'll come back. No live music. No live music. Okay. Yes, exactly. No live music. No live. Music. I, I really appreciate that, guys. I really do. Yeah. Uh, and I understood it's fine I, th I think we've done it okay uh, dr smith has her hand up okay i didn't see that dr smith go ahead uh yes uh they cannot have it for one year but if uh i don't i will not i will not agree to that i will vote against that thank you it, you're talking about down the road i said yeah that's exactly okay. I, I just after make sure. one year is what you discussed is that right yeah no they, they, they back for an alteration if they I, chose bob i understand perfectly what they're yeah. saying you don't okay. have to, okay yeah i understand but no matter what if they do uh, if they don't have music i don't see why we have to make an exception here and negotiate not having it for one year of course it's my one vote it's and we can discuss it that. but just no, know no, that no. i think that i don't think it's a good decision I, and i'm not voting for it thank you but but yeah, my, my my statements aren't necessarily just for you, Dr. Smith. They're statements to kind of clarify to make sure that everybody in the entire uh, meeting tonight understands what's being said. So there's no promises, at, at Dr. Smith. There never is. Uh, they're going to come back uh, if they do come back and they decide to. It would be to an alteration application or a change in method of operation. Uh, and and there's not going to be live music on the. And I know Bob, you said we're going to be discussing it. Exact. I was unable to come in person. You were there. Yeah. We will be discussing that. But I want to ask this question to you. Were you there? I was there. Okay. Did they say then that they would what we're discussing now that they would have live? Music? They may have. Uh, I don't know. I don't recall that because there were multiple conversations taking place in a very large roof deck. Uh, so it may have been said to other people and not to me. I just don't remember. But it is in the application and it was from day one. And that's why I wanted clarification tonight. Okay. Yes, thank you for that. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you for your time. And, and we're not saying we're not saying we're coming back. We're gonna you know. We got it. We so totally thank got you. It. Thank you. Thank really, you. We, 
We appreciate you guys allowing us to, to come back another time, allowing us to go up to the roof deck itself. Uh, we appreciate all the accommodations that were made. Thank you very much, okay? Absolutely, thank you. All right, have a good night. All right. Uh, next up, I just, my computer here, hold on. Okay, uh, next up, we're gonna again call out a turn uh, something that we heard last month, uh, 232 14th Street, DBA between us at 232 West 14th Street. Uh, this is for reconsideration uh, uh, of an application. If you're here on that application, could you please raise your hand? And then after that, we will go to the, to the last application that was heard last month. Um, and we'll get to that one, that's banter, okay? So that will be next. Okay, I see Mr. Palolo. Are you here by yourself, Frank? No. That's Happy New Year, you guys. Gotcha. Happy New Year, everybody. To you too. Are my clients on? Chrissy? Uh, yes. They're coming on now. We'll just give them a second here and then we'll go forward. Thank you for the courtesy, Robert. Yeah, you bet. Got to get the book for tonight. Evelyn, if you can hear me, you just got to turn your camera on. There yes, we go. I just okay, got it. Great. Hi, guys. How are you? Good to see you again. Uh, go ahead, Frank. Chrissy, you want to lead? Yes. Okay. First, I, uh, I would like to thank you guys to reconsider a second time to hear us out again. Um, I want to say I'm sorry. I was not prepared on the first time that I came to speak with you guys. It was my first time in CB. Um, I had no idea, uh, well, you know, all the, the questions, details and everything. And um, we got to prepare ourselves way better at this time. Um, so I really want to apologize for not being prepared and take your time that day. Uh, also, uh, like I say, we were in the process of hiring the manager, the general manager, and the chef. And we did. We have Jonathan Torres with us. He's a general manager, amazing person in, uh, in the dining business and, um, you know, late night. Um, yeah, let me interrupt you, Chrissy. We've made certain changes to the application. We've completely removed the backyard from the application. Um, there was concerns about it. It's no longer an issue. Right. Um, I've, in the last couple of days, sent you Jonathan's resume. I've sent the chef's resume. Um, and I sent the revised menu, which is from the new chef. That's what we had last month was a different chef. The chef we're using now has this menu. I wanted him to be here tonight, but unfortunately he's working. So, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. All right. I, um, in terms of hours of operation, it's still 4 a.m. Do we do we can, can we really we we're really we're really trying to keep the 4 a.m. We, we took away the backyard, which had a tremendous amount of seats. And we did that in order to keep our neighbors uh, happy. 4 a.m. Yeah. is important to us. We'd really like to be able to keep it. There, there was a question, Robert, that you had. I think it was you. I'm pretty sure about. Last reservations and last call, last reservation, I think was the expression you used. And, you know, we should have been paying more closer attention. I don't believe we're going to be taking reservations past 11 o'clock, which is what Chrissy said. But we right. do want to be open to serve dinner and serve that menu during all hours of operation so that people do come in. We can serve them. There doesn't appear to be, and Chrissy or Jonathan, either one of you can correct me, there doesn't appear to be a place in the neighborhood that serves food and drink late at night. Uh, for all the many blocks around there aren't. There, there are diners. There are diners that do not serve food, uh, serve alcohol, yes. But there's a, a niche here that we think we can tap into. And Jonathan is very experienced, as is Chrissy, is not as experienced with community board meetings, but she's experienced in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we'd really like to try and hold on to that 4 a.m. closing, if we could. We're not argumentative people. You know, I'm not. Yeah, we just haven't seen any spot to have an actual dinner all the way until 4 a.m. And with a nice drink and a great ambiance, you just don't have it in the neighborhood. 
And I should also add that, and I didn't bring this up last time, we um, put this meeting off for a month to meet with the neighbors. In November, we were supposed, first supposed to be on. We came on in December and you know we didn't do well. We didn't, we didn't show well, Chrissy. We're here again in January. The 4 a.m. is important to us. It, it's not something that, I mean, unless there's people who signed in, no one came in in December to say, we don't want a 4 a.m. place here. In fact, I think some of the residents who were talking about the backyard had no issues with 4 a.m. I well, actually spoke with Stephanie, S excuse me, Frank, spoke with Stephanie and uh, she you said, we don't who have Stephanie any, is. yes, we don't have any problem until 4 a.m. We just want to make sure the backyard, it's not going to be used. That was the main problem for them. And we collect signatures from all people around. Uh, also, we got very important recommendation letters from people. Um, I actually got in touch with the neighbor on top of the venue. And uh, they were really happy that we were gonna have a business down there. And- when you uh, say on top, you mean the floor above you? The floor on top of us, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a girl that lives there. She actually works in hospitality too. And um, she was willing to speak with you guys too. Uh, I spoke with Stephanie a few days ago. We exchanged text messages. She says she will be you know, supporting us as much as we don't use the backyard at two, three, four, but we gave up everything in the back because we don't want any problems with anyone. We just want to make sure we run something amazing, family oriented and for friends and family and sophisticated with amazing food. We the, also want to just we're we're, we're like showing that we're willing to compromise and work things out. I'm new to this, but uh, yeah, we want to make our neighbors happy. It's just as important. It's not, the restaurant isn't, only for the customers as for our neighbors and just having a good relationship with everyone. And also right. this strong outreach from the immediate vicinity supporting 4AM. Um, all right, I just, uh, I think there were other issues or problems with 4AM that were discussed last time, which, you know, you, you, you want live music, you want entertainment level music. Uh, actually, 4AM, so. Actually, actually, Bob, that's a good point because we did take a close look at the live music and the DJ, and I'm going to let Chrissy handle that. All righty. So it's just to point out, it's, we don't want entertainment level music. It's all going to be background music. Background. It's, we're we're very mindful that, of the volume. You said that last time. It was always background. Yeah. Yes, but uh, let me explain to them now, because I was a little lost when they asked me these questions before, and we went through this several nice. times between us, and we decided that... From 6 to 8 p.m., we want to have ethnic music, which is instrumental music, very mellow uh, for people live, to live talk music. to. Our, I'm live sorry? music. Live, live music. music. For Six people, eight. like instrumental, ethnic music. That's how acoustic. we call it. Acoustic. Yes, acoustic, you know, to I uh, start uh, the night. And then from 9 to 12, there will be, um, there will be a DJ. Um, it just in, in general, uh, the restaurants uh, and, and our and our community board are generally speaking twelve and one uh, are the latest hours for a restaurant. Um, and the, the discussion last month was, well, you're going to be a restaurant. That's what you indicated. But then, what was going on after one a.m. Uh, till four a.m. And it sounded more like a lounge of some sort. And I guess it was the lack of definition. So I mean, I'm just saying, if you're going to be a restaurant. Um, 4 a.m. doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I know you're willing to compromise, but I, I, my compromise, at least I'm suggesting to you, is 12 and 1 uh, because that's a restaurant. Those are the hours of restaurants. So, we just, anyway. I'm sorry, we just Robert, wanted to. Robert, if I may jump on that, uh, just a, a, po a point to remember is uh, it's opportunity that we see. There are no restaurants open between 12 and 4. You mentioned it just now. They're all from 12 to 1, and that's about it, the latest they get. You'll have a 24-hour restaurant like Opelia, but no restaurant that's open from that has hours of 12 to 4 included with a great cocktail and a great ambiance, and that's what we're trying to capitalize on. It's just having a, a nice late-night dinner or dinner where at that hour you can someone could walk in at 3 a.m. Uh, for those people that work late hours or just they're night owls. That's what we're working for. We're not, yeah, keep it simple. 
Right, but there are bars in that area. Certainly across the street, there's a bar that. Oh. Has a Look, Robert, I, it, it's funny because the bars are in that area. If the few that do offer food, it's finger food. They have last call until 11.30 p.m. or 12 a.m., but that's about it. And the finger food are wings, nachos. We don't want that. If you look at our food menu, we have some – come on. We want to offer this fine dining all the way to 3 a.m. We're going to have carpaccio on the menu. This is something you don't have. 4 a.m., you're going to be able to get a carp or. I guess we're closing at that time, but you get my point. From 12 to 4, you want to offer these this fine dining option that is nowhere to be found. Okay. Well, I'll open it up to other members, but I, I think the, you're going you're gonna to hear some opposition. I, I would say 12 and 1. That's, I do think that's a good compromise, uh, and, and that's what I would be recommending to everybody who's starting out to operate a restaurant, whether it's in that neighborhood or any neighborhood. And community board too. Um, but I'll open it up if, if there are other people on the committee that have any questions or would like to say anything uh, to them, uh, now would be the time. And I, I can't see, Donna, do you have your hand raised? I don't know. I'm, I am raising my hand. Um, yeah, I'm gonna agree with Bob with 12 and 12 and one. And and the backyard was never permitted. It You know, you didn't give it up. It wasn't permitted. So I just wanna be clear on that. There was no use allowed for that um but but you know this is your first restaurant and to come in and want four o'clock in the morning restaurants as bob is saying usually close at 12 and 1 and sure there are a few in some areas i can think of that are real restaurants that open that are open a little bit later than that but this is your your first venture and to be asking for four o'clock in the morning i'm not comfortable with at all especially that you're having a dj from nine to 12 um i don't know with a lot of restaurants that have the djs in there also from 9 to 12 so i just i have a problem with the hours in particular uh katie has her hand up dr smith has her hand up thank you donna so go ahead katie i, I just want to uh, reiterate you know, the hours are very important and i think i hope the applicants listen to the to uh the committee members on this issue because we're really <laughs> this is very important Thank follow you, our Dr. hours good dr smith yes um evelyn you were saying you're going to have a disc jockey from 9 to 12. what kind of music is that disc jockey going to be playing oh uh, I, I, i'm sorry can you repeat your question i said i heard you say that you're going to have a dj from right. 9 12 is that correct right that's correct so my the question music, to you is what kind of music will that dj be playing and will okay it music? so the music that yesterday i'm gonna give you one example yesterday i had dinner in a place that they were having music that when you like with lyrics music with like open format like when you're having a nice dinner there is a sound playing that i know so i'm enjoying my amazing meal having an amazing cocktail, singing to the song that I like, so that everybody knows that it makes the atmosphere, you know, amazing. And that's Chrissy, the kind Chrissy, of music that of I, because I'm, I'm kind Chrissy, of- Chrissy, Chrissy, three beats. What type of music? Country music, jazz. I just say open format, Frank. That's what I like. Open oh, format man. means it's a mix of any kind of music. It's not house music. No, not house no. music. It, let's say- a music that a client, oh, I would like to hear this song. Okay, well, I'm going to play this song for you. That's the kind of music. It says open format. That means everything. House music doesn't have lyrics. I'm talking about a song with lyrics, something very like amazing and with the great food, the atmosphere and everything together. It makes the fine dining perfect. I'm a foodie. I go out to dinner every week. I'm always enjoying a meal with great music and great cocktails. So I, I just wanted to do something that I love, that I've been trying to do for so long. That's my main thing. Is that answer your question? It does. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, well, well said, Evelyn. Okay, so uh, I, I don't see anyone else. I'm going to open up to the public. Is there anybody here from the public that would like to speak on this uh, application re reconsideration of application. Okay. You should have a neighbor jumping in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bob, Don is your eyes tonight. 
Stephanie uh, Pappas is joining, and then I have Augustine Hope I'm going to be raising. Okay. So, okay, we got Stephanie. Okay. Uh, go, go ahead, Stephanie. You, you're still muted, Stephanie, just so you know. Yeah, we can see your mouth. There we go. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, so I, as I told to Evelyn and, and I discussed with uh, the neighbors in our building at 238, we don't actually have an issue with the 4 a.m. Uh, Coppelia, as you know, is 24 hours. They serve till 4 a.m. Down the street, uh, there's the Irish bar, Grace's, that's open till 4 a.m. It is a bar. Um, so it's not like this block doesn't have a 4 a.m. presence. And in fact, in some ways, it kind of makes it, I, I know I'm sounding crazy, kind of makes it safer <laughs> in some way because, uh, you know, during the pandemic, when there was just no business running, it gets kind of sketchy. But when there's activity, um, it you know, it feels a little bit safer. But anyway, um, yeah, 4 a.m. is not the issue for us. It's more about bothering neighbors, um, you know, with sound. Um, these buildings are older. They're at least I know 232 is, I think, from the 1900. So the way they're structured, vibration really passes easily. I mean, I don't live next door, so it wouldn't necessarily bother me, but for the tenants living there and in the neighboring buildings, it might be a concern. So, um, you know, for in terms of music, make sure that you just have great soundproofing, which I believe um, Evelyn has promised, uh, mm -hmm. so that people aren't affected. I also mentioned to her in our text exchange, um, you know, one of the drags is when you live amongst restaurants, you know, they don't, they're told not to smoke in front of the entrance to the restaurant, so they'll <laughs> move in front of the, you know, apartment entrance and smoke, whether they're smoking pot or cigarettes. So I asked her, you know, to be mindful of that because it's a drag sometimes uh, to have to like tell somebody as you're entering your building, sorry, uh, can you go about, go away and not smoke? So that's really, you know, that's our concerns. And I mean, the big one was the backyard. And now I'm, I'm wasn't expecting that they were not going to use the back of 232. I did tell her that in no way, shape, or form, any sort of we could uh we'd be into them using behind 234. Um, but that we were okay with you know how it used to be. But as you said prior, even CK14 apparently never got the proper permission to uh use that backspace. So they were doing this for years. And as you know, as I expressed before, during the pandemic, they just didn't care about the rules. One other thing um, I wanted to mention was that, yeah, in summertime, people do like to get fresh air. So one thing that the other place used to do is open their back door, which means sound would come from the back do door then into the courtyard and into everybody's apartment. So I would really hope we could promise that the back door will not be open for fresh air when when there is loud music uh, in, in being, being played. And, and in terms of DJs, I mean, you could, I think music that doesn't have heavy bass driven uh, sounds, it's kind of okay. But when there's heavy bass, which a lot of, a lot of music has, it doesn't have to just be house music. It does tend to vibrate uh, buildings. So that is a concern, but like I said, I don't live right next door, so it wouldn't be uh, that much of a concern, but for those in the building next to it and above, that's something they really should uh, consider. So that's I all I have to say. We, we're not against the 4 a.m., um, and that's I that. Got, I think we got it. Thank, Thank you, you. Stephanie. Sure. Uh, hold, hold on, Evelyn. Hold on. Oh, sure. We're, we're going to hear from everybody. Go ahead, Mr. Hope. Hi, Augustine Hope, West Village Residence. Um, Evelyn, um, Sorry, I should to be speaking to the board. Uh, we've heard people saying that they want to be open. They want to have restaurant hours until two, three o'clock in, in the morning because uh, they are serving people who eat late. Um, there are no people that eat that late. I mean, essentially no people. If they do want to eat late, we have places in the West Village that can serve them. The problem with you, uh, asking for a 4 a.m. license, and I believe this is your first um, rodeo, uh, is that this is these after 11 o'clock, people become bars, or after 12 o'clock at the very latest, your kind of establishment becomes a bar. You attract people who are drinking until the early hours of the morning. 
you don't make the area safer, you make the area more dangerous. I'm sorry that one person is a solitary voice in our community. We don't feel the same way at all. I think if you're starting a business and you want to lay, do some groundwork with the community, I think you should take up Bob Ely's suggestion and close 12 weekdays and 1 a.m. weekends and see how it goes. And then come back to them and talk to, and talk about later hours if you can prove that it is a benefit to the community. I don't know that it will be, but that is what I would suggest. That's Thank your opinion. You. Okay. All righty. Thank, okay. Thank you, Ms. O. Are you you're all done, Stowe? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So, so Evelyn, now, if you'd like to respond, be my guest. Uh, this is Bob. The Bob, no, oh, you've got oh, more people. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Sorry. We got one more There's person. Two more people. Tyra Islam and Catherine Quinn is coming up. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Evelyn. Give us a, a few more it's minutes. Okay. And then so, Tyra, go, go ahead, Tyra. Hi, how are you? Um, so I just signed my 12 month lease to 232 West 14th Street. I live in apartment 1A. Um, I basically just came on here just to say I support Evelyn uh, pursuing a 4 a.m. license. Um, I think it'll be great um, for someone who works late nights and comes home sometimes at one or two in the morning. Um, it would be nice to see a business with its lights on. Um, as we all know, 14th Street, there's a lot of homelessness. There's a lot of sh shady, sketchy people. Um, I personally would feel a lot safer knowing that there's a business open with its doors open and lights on. Thank you, Tyra. Thank uh, you. It, we also have uh, Ka Catherine, Catherine Quinn. Are you here, Catherine? If you are, you need to unmute yourself. There we go. You're still muted though. We can see you, but we can't hear you. Usually it's right on the there you go. No, I just want to agree. I just want to agree with Augustine. Uh, it it may be that you want to come home at one or two in the morning and see a a a, a place open, but four a.m. is really uh, over the top, and I don't think that is what you're actually looking for. Is that it, Ms. Quinn? I'm sorry. Yes. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. So, so now, Evelyn, I think that's everybody. Uh, if you'd like to say something and respond, go right ahead. Yes. Well, can, I, if, can, if, can, can I ask a question first? Three beats. Can I ask a question, Bob? Uh, sure. Are there those people who just spoke residents of this area? They are. They're members of the West Village residents. A block, it's a block association. But they're not residents of 14th Street, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Go yeah. ahead, Evelyn. As far as I know, that's correct, Frank. It's but oh, I, and I think it's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to answer. Um, I met I met with Stephanie in person and I she made a very important um comment, especially on the soundproofing. And uh, we actually made sure that we doing like a combination of the panels inside the walls. Uh, I mean, the foam inside the walls and the panels outside of the walls, which is for the soundproofing. Plus the triple curtain, it's a triple layer of curtain that we're doing on the door. So the sound doesn't travel outside. Besides the carpeting, which is holding the, holding the sound too. And I promised her that I was gonna do that. And we actually did that already. So the soundproof is completely amazing. Uh, you cannot hear anything, but we're not gonna have crazy big speakers. Like I say, we wanna do something with the ambience. It's something like, like the name say, between us. Something classy, amazing atmosphere with family, friends, people gonna know how to, they're gonna have to know how to dress to come inside the place. We're not gonna take anybody that wearing shorts or sneakers. Like I say, we wanna do some fine dining with the amazing chef, Dominic Pape. He's well-knowing, working with uh, Michelin star chefs before. He has the experience. The menu is incredible. 
and you know having a nice glass of champagne with the caviar something that we don't have around like i say i go around eating let's say three times a week to get to know places and try different foods and try different cocktails and with friends and family my parents are visiting from my country and i've been taking them out to try different things so when you have the great music you know great family and you know everything around that makes the complement the space it's 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 amazing and that's what i was really looking for and the 4 a.m i asked because i went around and i see there is nothing like that and also the location is really really good the neighborhood is amazing so that's my whole point i think we got it i think we got it um dr smith has oh, her doctor, okay good you're up top go ahead dr smith well, Len, it sounds great my question to you though is are you going to be restaurant uh, reservation only, or can people walk in? We gonna we'll have be to taking walk-ins and res reservations, yeah. And yeah. if they show up in sneakers, will you? What will happen? So no, when I when I say sneakers, sneakers, what will happen? When I say yeah, when I mean I wear sneakers twenty four seven. I hate high heels, but my sneakers are very classy. So when I say sneakers, I mean somebody coming from the Yankee games. That's different. Like summertime, when people try to come in, oh, you know, drunk, you know, coming from a game or from a gathering, that's not what we're looking for. We want something classy. I actually oh, yeah. went out last night wearing my sneakers and a beautiful dress. I look amazing. Yeah. I went and I made a nice reservation in a nice restaurant. I went to Nobu 57. So, which oh, is, wow. has that great is music. A, that is a nice restaurant. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. So, mm -hmm. it has a great music ambience beautiful people i wanted to show my parents you know my favorite sushi you know what i mean so this week i have another reservation this weekend for another amazing place so that's what i love to do i'm starting my own foodie blog and i take a lot of pictures of all the foods and cocktails wherever i go i'm very passionate about it so good luck to you evelyn i appreciate it thank you great i think that does it uh, I don't see, yes, it does. Okay, great. So I think we did it. Uh, uh, thank you again for coming back, Jonathan. Uh, uh, guys, may I address some a few things and concerns that the neighbors oh, sure. had quickly? Sure. Okay. Uh, so it was for, I, everyone's concerns uh, valid very, I want to make sure you guys understand that we do here and we want to address it. Uh, so Stephanie said something about the doors being propped open and the audio uh, sound bleeding out. Uh, Doors will always stay closed, whether to get fresh air or not. We have central air for a reason. And in addition to that, we do want to have critters coming in from the backyard. So it's even more reason to keep it closed. Uh, so I, for her, one concern. And when it came with bass, we're going to avoid bass. We're going to avoid those heavy, hard hitting uh, instruments. We understand from past history and our experiences that they're very intrusive with the neighbors. They go right through the walls, especially this building. She's right, it's from the 1900s. So that's why we have such engineers. It's uh, it's unbelievable what they have out there now. Uh, and now I, I forgot the gentleman's name that spoke earlier. Uh, his main concern and someone else's concern was that after 11 p.m., what becomes of a place like, this, the, like the restaurant? He's saying that we're gonna become just a bar for drinking and that's it. I, I I get it. It's a lot of places it happens to. And this is why they close out their reservations or their foods. They do their food last call 1130. They just lose focus of this. We don't want to do last call of the kitchen early like that. We're going all the way to 4 a.m. We are from six to four a restaurant. And that's our full intent to do our best to do that. And after 11, with it being just drinking again, we are a full restaurant. This, the purpose, the reason people will be coming to us is because of our late dining or from 12 to 4 factor that you can have a full dinner there. This is something that's not offered in uh, most of many parts of New York, and especially after 2019. You don't find it anymore. And this is the opportunity we're taking. Um, in regards to becoming a dangerous or leading to dangerous situations, I understand what drinking, what happens. This is where we have to go through our certifications in the industry. Uh, to avoid this and to monitor our, our clients, our guests. 
This is also a reason we are going to have somewhat of a dress code because we want to control the type of guests that come in. Some people that would be, if you're more mindful of your appearance, you're going to be mindful more often than not of your behavior. And in addition to that, we have our licensed security from all the way from 11 to 4, uh, and even having security stay later, whatnot, something to help the neighbors. We would be happy just to make sure uh, to show that we are mindful of the risks. We don't want to have people rowdy outside. We don't have to have, want, have people rowdy right next door that are coming from us. It's a bad representation of us. We don't want any dangerous situations. This is why immediately we're getting security when we open. We're prepared for this. We've had each of us have a decade in the industry, or Evelyn much more than myself, but we're aware of the we want to be very controlling of it. And it's, uh, I guess the next part is uh, anything to do. Oh, actually, I believe, was it someone addressed the DJ from 9 to 12 being concerned? Again, the DJ, our DJ from 9 to 12, I understand the concern for, for it. But this is going to be one of our prime times, a first full seating, and then we're going to get another seating after that. But it's the DJ's background level. I, it, the main point of the DJ is that they read the crowd. They're very good at that. Just having a standard playlist playing, it's not the same. The DJ will be able to read the crowd, see what's working well, what they like or don't like, uh, can switch off the music. It, every day would be a different kind of group. But he's that he or she will be instructed to stay away from these loud, percussive, heavy bass sounds. This is just doesn't it's not the atmosphere we're trying to create. Our restaurant is to be first and foremost somewhere you can be intimate and bond with somebody, whether it being on a date or just with some other friends or a few group of friends where you are want to be well behaved in a nice environment where people aren't getting rowdy because that the 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 bars where you see people just sitting next to each other, but yelling and then bumping and just no one respectful of each other's conversations is it, it's uh, for both of us is a problem. That's why we were very picky about where we go out. And this is also part of the reason we do want to move forward with this opportunity. You don't find a place from 12 to 4 that offers a full dinner with well-behaved customers and that are respectful and you can enjoy your 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 time and your dinner in your own atmosphere. Uh, and I, I think that makes some things clear. But guys, is there anything that still concerns you in to, in regard to what I said? Well, I do think the hours are going to concern uh, uh, most of the people on our on, on, on our on our committee. Um, but be that as may, I think I made that uh, pretty clear already. Um, and I do think that we have um, pretty much. Uh, hopefully, did Carter has his hand up now. Okay, I just yeah, tried to put I, I just, application, but go ahead, Carter. Yeah, your your chef's coming from a restaurant that can be open later. They're not. Uh, a boucherie, they're allowed to be open until 2 a.m. on the weekends. They're not. There are plenty of other restaurants that can be. The reason they're not open late is because there's no business. That's one part. The second part is the overhead and staffing costs, because most people find that the, the diners are earlier, so they open earlier. And it's very expensive to run two shifts of staff. And I mean, I don't know how you guys know more than the experienced restaurateurs that could do this very easily simply by extending their hours. Um, but it, it doesn't make any sense. And then 14th Street on, on top of that is, is even harder to understand because of the, that area and uh, the traffic. You can't take, even take a car there during the day. It's only in the evenings that you can. I mean, there's there's no opportunity to sort of build the word of mouth, which is where most restaurants get their following is during normal dining hours. Um, and then they keep having seatings. You know, we, we have seen many, many restaurants try to do this over the years. I certainly have. And there's only one that makes it. And, and, uh, and I don't even know if they're still open late and um, on a regular basis. And... Um, so I, I just, you know, that Master Carter, which is that one that makes it? We know which one yeah. it is. We know which one it is. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, um, Blue it's the example that's raised over and over, but uh, it's Blue Ribbon. And, um, y you know, y you know, it's just not there. And, and the, the fact that you're not focusing on earlier hours and you're opening at six 
that's where m- most of the money, extra money is made is the hour earlier, not, you know, staying open later. And 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 so I, I just don't understand how loud music, DJs, et cetera, all that mixed in. It's a lot of focus on the late night when the bread and butter of just about every business is earlier. And, and the staffing costs, I just don't understand how you can overcome that. Um, you know, when there's no focus on the earlier, it just, it just seems that that doesn't business-wise, it doesn't make sense in the current environment to me. And um, I'm sorry, I don't agree with uh, people making more money earlier because I work in so many places that after five, when you change the menu to lunch and brunch, goes to dinner, that's when the reservations keep coming. People keep walking. I personally go to dinners after eight when I'm off with my friends, with the, I, I go to dinners, my reservations are 11 p.m., okay? And, um, and that's how I enjoy having my family around, having my friends around. And I know so many restaurants and I speak with so many owners and so many people, places I worked. The busy hours for us, it was after five, so. Well, I never said that, that's normal dining time, 5 p.m. So yeah. that's my point. But, you know, I don't want to belabor this. I, I just th- th- this, you know, the focusing on those later hours doesn't make much sense. Uh, you, you have great uh, points. Honestly, you do have great points. I wouldn't say not to focus on it. Um, and it's a lot of concerns that we brought up between ourselves and conversation. Uh, it It's a lot of places like get success from lunches or whatnot. Uh, getting the word out between us. You brought up that, too. Uh, word of mouth it's going to be a little difficult for us but word of mouth is involves the touch of service the intimacy we're trying to bring we're going to be very involved with our tables our customers our clients in order to build that i I guess you'd say word of mouth advertisement we want to spread the word for more people to come later and in regards to the hours uh just like myself i go to bed at four in the morning every day uh evelyn goes to bed probably later than me (laughs) And out of everyone here, who would any of you say you go to bed around that time? I'm, it's a rare, it's not, and it's not a rare thing. It really isn't a rare thing. You have New York City, which is a lot of hospitality. It's people working dinner shifts or coming home at 12 or 1 wanting to eat. This Restaurants are booming again. It's really, really making a comeback for this late night people to be coming back into the market. We want to capitalize on that again. I, I know it seems very difficult. It's, uh, yes, the staffing costs may be an issue, but again, we're only 64 person occupancy. To staff, it's going to be very easy. Uh, what was the other concern? Other places and restaurants not being open past uh, two or past their allotted uh, loud hours, like Boucherie, you gave an example. It, the location isn't great for that. Boucherie location is not great to stay open till two. I we believe our location where we're picking, it's a great neighborhood, plenty of residences around, and plenty of people that are already out and about at that time. Copella, you have a lot of people going there. You have a few other 4 a.m. restaurants, all just all the way down at the other end of four, of uh, 14th, and nothing near the west side. So it's uh yeah, I I appreciate the concerns in terms of our operations, but we it's we spent countless hours figuring this out what our costs will be and uh we do believe that we're we're able to make the sacrifice for a time to build to it we're confident that we'd be able to build 12 to 4 crowd okay uh miss kent uh susan kent's got her hand up uh i'll let susan go but i, I this is we, we spent a lot of time on this application last month yeah, and I, it's not that but important i'm not saying you susan i'm saying it to everybody okay oh. so go ahead i mean i respect their their read on their their market and the world that their personal their anecdotal evidence and their the, their personal associations and what you know their associates might prefer but i cannot t- tell you how many articles i've read including something to, in today's time talking about how dining in new york has gotten earlier and earlier to the point where people who would laugh at the idea of eating at 5:30 are now eating at 5:30 and six o'clock and again and again and this whole shift and i'm not saying that there isn't a place for late night dining but if you're looking at trends and you're looking at at at, a, at, a, at our market as a whole it is all shifting earlier so i'm just pointing that out because it just keeps appearing in the media 
in multiple on multiple formats. Thank you know what? Yeah, I, I do get what you're saying, especially with that what seems like anecdotal evidence. We've done our research with the restaurants, uh, looked over 30 restaurants in the area to see their last call, even. Uh, and I'll even reference something else. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with New York City and Company. They do a lot of the research for tourism in New York City. They basically forecast what we're going to be bringing in, and they're pretty large and they're pretty accurate with these items. They're expecting more tourists than 2019 in New York City this this year. More tourists this year alone. And uh, again, there's and restaurants open from 12 to 4, kind of died out. And there are more tourists coming in. So I, I don't think it's anecdotal, guys. I do believe we do have that opportunity. Just to be clear, Robert, I don't want to take more time, but do you, wouldn't you guys agree that six, more tourists in 2019 in the city is a pretty big thing? Is this what this is what makes us make our claims okay uh, but most I, of the I'm tourists sure. are attracted to the daytime amenities of new york city not not okay. 12 to 4. <laughs> i gotta tell you guys it's time okay we, we spent a lot of time i think it's pretty clear uh what is being said back and forth uh we're, we're doing our best uh, but we're gonna have to put an end to the application at least for tonight um, bob my hands up can i just say one thing yes okay. go ahead frank I've, I've been before this committee enough times to know the the typical Bob Ely, I don't mean to say this in the wrong way, but this is yeah. not going the way I would like it to go. I would like it well, as taken. I can't, I can't make a decision, but I, I do think 4 a.m. is awful late, Frank. Okay. So let me let me just say this. We have residents who support it, who came, who signed petitions, who came to the meeting to say they support it. We have a very commercial block. It's not a residential block. I think the argument is well sought in a block in Augustine's neighborhood but not on 14th Street. Can we compromise and just take the weekends, do Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Give us the weekends to prove ourselves that we can operate at 4 a.m. And that uh, I'm trying to be, I don't want to get a disapproval here, guys. I'd like to hear Bob say to me, would your clients agree to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 4 a.m. and 2 a.m. the rest of the week? Except I can't do that. Okay. I, I said I would like it. Because I, I, I don't make the decisions by myself alone. Uh, it's not it's not the time and place, but I will discuss it with everybody else, and we'll provide our recommendation uh, that, as we do for every application, right? Okay. Well, but can I ask one more question, Chrissy? Would you agree to those hours? I would agree with that. Whatever okay. you say. So at least you have that when you go into exec. I appreciate that, Frank, very much. Okay. That All right. Has her hand up. I was just I was just going to say uh, Bob gave a very good response to your question, Frank. Doctor, it's so hard to everything is case by case. Excuse me. I'm saying it's so hard to look at you and your facial expression never changes. I miss seeing you live. <laughs> well, we're, we're hey, probably it is what it is. I'm looking forward to look. Live, I'm looking, yeah. I suspect we'll be live next month, but I keep saying that and it doesn't happen. Okay, but thank you again, thank, Frank. Thanks for your Frank, consideration, guys. And Jonathan, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time, everyone. You're very well. you. Enjoy your year, your year. Talk to you soon. Okay, so. Uh, the next application, I need to take a quick break here uh, and I'll come right back. But the next application is going to be Banter Hospitality Group, 169 Sullivan Street. This again was is a repeat uh, folks from uh, last month. So one, one two minute break here and then we'll keep going. Joshua, is it just you? I... No, there's uh, Lindsay's oh, on we... as well. Who, excuse me? Lindsay. Got it. And I believe Andrew might be also on. Thanks, Donna.
think we're all back. Just want to make sure Mr. Brian, Brian is, Brian, are you back? Let's give him another second here, a minute. I'm back. Great. Uh, all right. I think we're all back. Uh, so, so jo uh, Joshua and Lindsay, uh, you are back. Uh, just so you, as a FYI, so you understand, this is our SLA two committee. Uh, I believe the last time you were in front of our SLA one one committee, so you got switched over. I, I'm not, I think that's what happened to a Thursday night. I mm -hmm. think it was. Um, uh, I'm not sure how that ended up, but it did. So, uh, if you could give us a rundown uh, for go back to the very beginning, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. Go ahead. So I'll, I'll try to keep things as brief as possible as well. I know we've, we've had a, a little bit of a long night, but um, I'm, I'm Lindsay Farina. I'm here representing Banter Hospitality Group. We appeared last month to discuss a corporate change application. And we asked the matter to be held over for this month because some issues were raised with regard to the premises outdoor seating arrangements. And the board had wanted us to dive into those issues a bit more before they would vote on the corporate change application. So um, quickly, the corporate change application is going to be a 100% um, shareholder change, but it will be three levels above the operating entity within the corporate structure. The on-site management will remain the same. And we are also here to talk about a change of method of operation application, just to resolve the issues that were raised with regard to the outdoor seating. Um, and, and I'll get into that briefly as well. Um, so when we met last month, uh, it was discussed that there's actually a restriction on our license that the SLA placed on the premises saying that the patio area should only be used as a waiting area and not for food and alcoholic beverage service. So um, I didn't have all the full history on that. We, we dug into those details and, and, and that is accurate. At this time, the patio is only being used as a waiting area without any food or beverage service. And we're not seeking to change that. Uh, the reason that we're here um, for a change of method of operation application is that the premises also has a roadbed seating area outside. And we would like to gain uh, the appropriate approval to use the roadbed seating area for food and alcohol service. It had been in use during COVID and we had obtained the, the appropriate approvals through the open restaurants program. But now that um, the guidance on how the outdoor seating is being used changed this past June. We do have to take this extra step to continue using the roadbed area for food and beverage service. Uh, since we last spoke, the restaurant um, stopped serving alcohol on the roadbed because we wanted to take all of the required steps before they serve alcohol out outdoors again. So um, we would like to discuss that as well while we're here. The roadbed contains 11 tables with a total seating of 22. It is eight feet by 27 feet in size. And they're only looking to use the roadbed space for alcohol and dining up until 4 p.m. We um, submitted a petition from residents in support of the roadbed space we were able to obtain 180 resident signatures in support of the roadbed space. And I also wanted to mention that patrons have been communicating to Josh that they feel safer having the option to dine outside. Um, the you know, COVID issues keep changing and morphing and they're, they're not quite gone yet. So not everyone feels comfortable dining inside. Therefore, keeping the roadbed space for food and alcohol allows the business to be a bit more profitable. And those are all of the details I have for now. Um, I do have Josh Evans with me. He owns and manages the space. He's there on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're happy to answer any other questions or address any other issues. Great, I appreciate that. So uh, I will say that um, we, we did get an application uh, 
on our other committee on Tuesday night for the business next door. Uh, and um, there were some pretty significant issues with regards to there were, you know, pictures. Uh, and I, I, you know, we have pictures of that particular block on, uh, on Sullivan Street. Uh, and, um, you know, there's a whole row of sheds there uh, and really no access for trash uh, or to be, to be put out uh, or, you know, it's just a very narrow roadway because of the, uh, the sheds on both sides. And so, you know, uh, there, there, there are gonna, I, I suspect there will be objections to the shed, um, and, and, you know, and I, I guess, you know, you're taking away the seating on the patio or on the front uh, before the sidewalk, um, and, and, but in keeping the roadbed when, I guess what, what, what but I guess I was hoping he would say is we're, we're getting rid of the roadbed and we're keeping the seating on the, on, on, the, on, on the front there. So it's just the opposite. And it, well, it has, more, you know, I, I know you want to respond, but it has a lot to do with access. The fact that there's three in a line there, there's no break for it to get in into the street at all. Um, and so I understand it was done, done during the COVID period of time, but I just, I bring that up to you at the very beginning uh, because uh, that is something uh, that came up Tuesday night. Uh, sure. Feeling is going to come up again tonight. No, I know um, Josh had um, some discussions with me before this meeting with regard to the trash, so I'll let him respond to that issue. Yeah, obviously, obviously trash is uh, a hot topic when it comes to the roadbed. Um, so, yeah, I guess one, we clean our sidewalk section of the street um, and including the road with. I mean, environmentally safe chemicals each morning. Um, our, tress, our trash used to go on the sidewalk um, when there were cars on the road um, or in the parking spots. Now there's a section in between the roadbeds where we put our trash um, and we've got approval from the landlord um, to do that like, it's with the building directly above us. And we've spoken with neighbours who we share this area with. The neighbours actually put their trash in um, like almost storage containers like on the sidewalk right up against the wall. Um, we, uh, yeah, now it goes on the roadbed, which means that it's a better solution because there's more, I guess, of a thoroughfare for the sidewalk and people, pedestrians walking on the sidewalk. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess if we didn't have the road option, this trash would be put out on the street. We close at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. So the trash would go on the sidewalk and it would be there from 3 p.m. until it got picked up in the morning or like early morning, say 1 a.m. or whenever the trash guys come out. So, yeah, I, I, I think the trash is honestly a better solution of where, where it goes now. Um, but like, I'm happy to take on any suggestions of, of what we can do better. Well, it, it's not just the trash situation. It's also the, the, the road, the narrowness of the road. So, I mean, that's such a narrow road to start out with. And then the road beds themselves extend much further than just cars or parking uh, there. So the narrowness between the two sides of the street, uh, because the roadbeds, uh, that, that was also, a, a, you know, safety. Uh, and, and, the, and then the question becomes is, yeah, are we really, you know, uh, wh where are we in terms of these, uh, these, these roadbeds? And yeah. you, you, on the other hand, you, you actually have some space outside, which, um, you know, was originally prohibited but uh, at least you have a place outside where people can go if, you know, the few people that are still concerned about it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Absolutely. I, I mean, it, it just, just with that, Bob, um, like if, 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 if we're open to using the patio, then absolutely I'm happy to compromise with that. I just wasn't aware that you guys would be open to that. But if you are, absolutely, I'm open to discussion. Um, well, the patio, and, um, the concept of the patio is an exchange to get rid of the roadbed. That, that's what that, that's what the, that's what I that's why I suggested it's at least you have a place uh, you don't need the roadbed because you have a place for people to go outside uh, and so you know that's a level of compromise but it involves uh, the, uh, the objection is to the roadbed and the narrowness of the road and, and the fact that there's three of them in a row there um, I guess you know, I, I, one, one solution one solution that I'd be happy to help with is um, I'm happy to cut out an additional six feet of the roadbed to give additional space 
right in front of ours. I can't talk for Jamico from Send the Gluten. Um, I know him very well. He's a very organized, he's a perfectionist, just like we are in terms of keeping the whole place clean. Um, but I have, I've got a larger shed because my space is wider. Yes. So I'm, yes. I'm, I'm happy to help um, with regards to making the opening larger. I can, I can, I can work around that. But in terms of the outdoor seating for us um, and, and why it's important is because the overwhelming response I got from the 180 people of the signatures that I got um, was that they do feel safer outside. I've got staff still wearing masks. Um, so I've got instant feedback from neighbours. Um, I've got elderly, um, elderly people in my building who dine with us and sit outside, even in the cold. We've got heaters. Um, and, you know, no, COVID, you know, it, obviously, like, you've got the sicknesses related to COVID, but you've also got COVID-impacted staff shortage shortages for us. Obviously, revenue losses. Our revenue went down by 80%. So I've got to recoup that over time. Um, food costs have gone up, the supply chain, all that. So, like, it means a lot to us and staff. You know, I'd part, like, I'd have to let go of staff if I got rid of this. Um yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's a little bit more to it, and I'm, ha I'm happy to open it up a bit. I'm happy to cut it back six feet, and that would give 12 feet of opening in between from um, the corner spot and my spot. And then Jamico is the final one, and then there's 50 foot, 60 foot. There's nothing on the right hand side of Jamico's. So I'm happy to work with you guys here to be able to do this. Well, I appreciate that, Joshua. I'm going to open it up to if there's anybody else in the committee that has anything, uh, any any questions. Um, I, Katie, I can't say. Do you have your hand up? No. Okay. Yes, I do. I'm um, I, I'm a little bit at a disadvantage because I only sit on the one committee, so I didn't hear some of the previous conversation. But I did read the application today, and I would only point, I don't know if someone's pointed this out to you before, but you are in a historic district, as far as I can tell. I, you said you weren't, I think you are. And I'll, you've mentioned the 180 signatures. I only find 11 of them are direct neighbors and maybe another four from the block. I mean- No, well, I, I, I found, I found, I, I counted the them. signatures. I know, there are 180 signatures, but I'm yeah, not but talking then I was gonna... about- I was going to say there's 66 say? of those, 66 of those signatures were within four streets of the cafe. I counted them as well. Yeah, but I'm, were, I'm interested in the people who are on your block because they're they the eat at my rest. They eat at my restaurant. The landlord lives on my block. I don't. I've seen, I, I've been, I, that's fine. I'm. You really shouldn't. You should. I'm pointing something out to you. I'm going to be voting on your application. I think you should just say thank you for pointing that out. Thank you for pointing that out. A little word to the wise. Little word sorry to the about wise. that. I, I, yes, sorry, fair I, enough. I, right. I get passionate about it. I'm sorry. No, I, I understand. I appreciate the passion. Uh, no doubt. So I, I don't, I'm going to, I guess I will open it up to the public. Uh, and uh, if there's anybody here on this application would like to speak, uh, please raise your hand at this point. And I can't see, so let me see. Uh, hang on, Mickey McGee is coming on. Okay. Let's see one other parts person too. Yeah, my best chance. What happened to Mickey? I Augustine is here. I'm I don't see Mickey. Yeah, I saw her just a second ago. I know <laughs> she she was elevated and then she's she was lost. So okay. I'll keep an eye out. Okay. So go ahead, Mr. Hope. Hi. Um thank you for letting me talk on this. Um to the uh, to Joshua, I think his name is. Um, I'm from the West Village Residents Association. I think we've been in the news a little bit that we are hugely opposed to this street dining, and I have to say that that is the current situation. O originally, we were 
when polled by CB2, we said we were very much in support of it. <clears throat> it was a really good idea to help restaurants survive through the pandemic. So I'm very well aware that it certainly helped you through the pandemic. Um, but <clears throat> the time has passed and um, now they've become a real problem for us. Uh, but apart from just blocking access to buildings, they've become residential areas for vermin. Uh, they've made it, they make it harder for people to get up and down the sidewalk, especially the elderly. They have to deal with <clears throat> people serving food and alcohol across the sidewalk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I understand that it has become <clears throat> very desirable to have it now because it means extra revenue. But I think it might be a little bit of an exaggeration when you're saying you need to make up lost revenue because I believe that you got over a million dollars in bailout money um, for your operation to help you through the pandemic, which I'm very glad you got. But I think that probably paid back a lot of your your overhead of being closed and you had have had free use of public space. So I would urge you just to get rid of it. Um, I think the community as a whole would be very grateful to you. I, I'm sure there's a few people around you that would, that would be happy to sit outside on other people's property. Um, but please just just take it away. Let's get back to business. It's a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. We really don't need these street sheds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hope. Uh, I'm going to. Mickey's it, it, on. Mickey's oh, on. All right, because there was a bunch of things in the chat too, and I was just like, I want to make sure we get give her a, a chance. Okay, go ahead. Um, we'll, we'll wait. Uh, okay, there's Miss Miss McGee. When you're when you when you get your picture on, we'll we'll uh, we'll move on. Just bear with us, folks. Um, okay, there. Yes. We see you, but we can't hear you. Okay, I think you can hear me now, right? Great, yes. thank you. Um, I have a reverb from because I'm also on a on a cell phone at the same time. Um, thank you for talking about this and bringing this up, Bob. Um, it is a dangerous passageway to walk down. Um, I am the mother of a young adult woman on the autism spectrum, which I don't usually talk about, but I was a young woman in New York once and walking down a corridor like that, I wouldn't even have done that with my full neurotypical capacity and my street smarts. My daughter can't walk in this neighborhood anymore. She can't walk at night. She's a high functioning person on the autism spectrum. It is unsafe for my child to walk in the neighborhood she grew up in because of shed situations like this. A six foot cutout doesn't cut it. I appreciate you're trying to do that. It's wonderful that you offered that. It doesn't solve the problem. It won't solve the problem. We need to have sight lines to our sidewalks. Young women walking down our streets need to have a means of egress to the roadbed. It's super unsafe. I have heard this from women all around the city. I've heard this from other parents of people with autistic young adults and children, that the situation of the street sheds have changed their lives. So I implore this committee to make my neighborhood habitable again for my child who grew up here. And now she is 25 and she does not live in this neighborhood right now because it's not safe for her to walk here. She lives in another neighborhood where the street sheds are not like they are here. So I don't usually go to this place to talk about this, but this is our home. We are not planning to move. And we want our daughter to be to come to our neighborhood and to visit us. We walk her to a car when she goes back to her neighborhood. We walk her to a car service. It's really unsafe. And, and I've heard lots of people say this, lots of women. And so I think it, it can't be overstated how dangerous those blocked corridors are for, um, for people in our neighborhoods. And I ask you to please not have this shed there. And I would like the others to come down as well, but they're one by one, hopefully going to be addressed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. McGee. Okay. Um, is, is that it, Donna? There's nobody else, right? I, I uh, hang on one second. Yeah, I have one, Jeffrey Rowland.
Can you hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you, but we can't see you. But uh, go, go I, ahead. I don't have my I don't have my camera on. I've been eating dinner. I'm sorry. I no, no, go, say, go ahead, Mr. Rowland. Yes, what I want to say is that I, I I can't support this application unless they're willing to take 20% of their shed and cut it out and make a passageway to the street through that where they can have their customers who want to wait stand in while they're or then later on when they're closed they could put their garbage there to be picked up but it should be at least 20 percent of their their frontage of what they have as a shed otherwise i don't have a problem i'm happy with that thank you mr rowan okay um uh, I'll let you. I, 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 there's no no nothing else from the committee that I can. I don't. I don't. See. Okay. I'll, I'll let you go ahead, Joshua and and Lindsay, if you'd like to respond. Yeah, I guess just with regards to I think Mr. Hope brought up um, some of the funds that we were eligible for. Um, we weren't eligible for a lot of it because we're Australian citizens. I guess that's one thing. The other thing that got brought up was vermin. Um, we have a weekly exterminator that does outside and inside. I've got records of it. Um, it's Riley Pest Control. We maintain these. I understand that these sheds are an issue for a lot of people, um, particularly because a lot of sheds are dilapidated. I mean, I live in a neighborhood where I've got two kids, two daughters as well. And a lot of those sheds are dilapidated and they've got graffiti and they're not looked after and they were just put up through COVID and they haven't been removed. I, I completely understand that and appreciate that those ones need to be removed. But for us who maintain them and have put twenty to thirty thousand dollars into these with, you know, proper heating and proper boards and proper seating, you know, they might be temporary. But let us hold on to that to recoup costs that we lost, um, and let us hold on to that until they're temporary, and we'll follow the guidance. And if they, the city tells us to remove them, we'll remove them or remove it. I understand that. Um, the twenty percent cutout, I'm happy to do that. Like whether it's six feet, eight feet. I'm happy to make a big enough thoroughfare. You know, I'm happy to work with you guys with that. I keep the area clean. I keep the sidewalk clean. There's no trash on the sidewalk. Um, I close it. I close at three or four p.m. I'm not. A, I'm not looking for a four a.m. license. I'm not looking for an hour, like a, an extension in our time. You know, we're a breakfast and lunch spot, and we focus in my branding. It's your local. Like I focus on the neighbors above. I'm there like five days a week. I've been there for six years. You know, it was my first restaurant. Like I've put sweat and tears into this place. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that, uh, Joshua. I think that does it. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, it's, it's very hard to, uh, to try to figure something out uh, in terms of a shed at this point uh, in the proceedings. Uh, I think we'll have to discuss it, um, and um, and we'll get back to you uh, as to what our you know our position is at, at least uh, in terms of the shed, um, and, and with regards to the application. But I really appreciate you coming back and you clarifying and, and, and correcting uh, the, the stipulations. Uh, I think that was the right way to do it. Yeah, I, I guess just one thing that I'd jump in and say is if, if it is a compromise from the patio and, 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 the, and the roadbed, given that we'd definitely be able to sit people on the roadbed, then we'd consider that as well. One for the other. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I actually think that's a fair trade, uh, but, but um, I, I, need, I can't do it by myself. I need to discuss it. I understand. It. I appreciate so, that. And, and before you, we go, I just wanted to mention, I, we we focused a lot on the road bit, but I do want to make sure that we also obtain a, an appropriate vote for the corporate change as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The corporate change, but also, you know, in terms of the use of that um, the area in front, I think that still is, uh, you know, an, an issue. I know that your application your application actually says you'd like to have seats and chairs there, but then you would kind of withdrew that tonight uh, uh, orally. Uh, in the presentation, and and then I brought it back up. So so I think that's something that we can discuss. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the application on Tuesday night does have certain level of precedent, uh, uh, and 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 I think we need to discuss that as well. Okay. If sure. um if if it also gets to it, if you need me to make a cutout on the um on the side that um butts up against sends the gluten, I'm happy to make a cutout there as well. Yeah. 
you know. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, no, I heard that pretty loud and clear. I appreciate the fact that. Oh, you're... sorry, I was, I was I was referring to the other end of it, doing a cutout there, but I'm also happy to do a cutout so that there's a gap between each road bed. Understood. Understood. Right, thank you guys. Thank Thanks, you very guys. much. Thank you. Look forward to thank you guys. Bye. You bet. All right. Um, we're going to keep moving here. Uh, the next application is Sushi Sa Sasi. Um, I know I'm mispronouncing that. DBA Sushi uh, at 456 Hudson Street. If you're here on that, please raise your hand or, and we'll bring you up. Can you see anyone, Don? No. Yeah, okay. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is Lin from Susi four five six. Yes. How are you doing? Good. Good. You. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, but your is your name Sushi? Uh, yeah, Susi Susi four five six. The uh, DBA name and the uh, company name is uh, uh, Susi Sase. Right. But what's your name? Uh, my name is a Weiping Weiping Lin. What you know, Chad? Yeah, wait, wait. Do you have that name, Donna? We can, yeah. yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, good. We needed to change your name on the on the screen so that we knew we could we could see you. Okay, so so Mr. Lin, uh, yes, can you uh, introduce the committee uh, to your application? Tell us a little bit about your operation. Is, is this a beer and wine application? Go ahead. Yes, uh, this is a sushi restaurant, right? So we uh, opened uh, the uh, year and a half ago. And then uh, uh, we just uh, applied for the wine and beer license just for the uh, sushi restaurant. Just, you know, we don't do like, uh, um, just want to know something, something to, to go with, the, uh, to make customer happy to go with the sushi. You know, not something light, you know, that's all I want. Okay, and, and your hours of operation uh, are till 11 p.m. at night? Yes. Okay, and you don't, there's no sidewalk cafe or, or roadbed dining plan? No, no, just, okay. just yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with your location. I just wanted to make sure that everybody else knew that. Uh, it's not in your application, so I just clarify it. Okay. Uh, okay, and um, what experience do you have in, in, in running sushi restaurants? Uh, well, uh, I had uh, my own sushi restaurant like, uh, what, back to, it's like, well, maybe 13, 12, 13 years ago in the Carlo Garden, Brooklyn. And then uh, we, uh, we had uh, that one for two years. And then we, or we uh, sold at that restaurant then then I think I need to refine the, you know, my sushi skill. <laughs> so after that, I worked a couple of good restaurants in Manhattan, like uh, Michigan Star. So finally now it's my dream. So finally, you know, we opened a small restaurant with a, you know, it's like a little omakase style, you know. And, yeah. and you've, been, you've been open for about a year. How, how are things going? Uh, everything goes uh, uh, smooth. Is everything going, uh, it's, it's good, it's good. Good. I'm really yeah. glad you, uh, because I have the feeling that we're going to be coming over to your restaurant pretty soon. <laughs> Please, yeah. Please. And, and I love I love the fact that you're actually cooking while, or 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 preparing the food as you are presenting. I, I don't kind of I really don't remember that ever happening before. So you may be a first uh, in, in that regard. So uh, touche. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, is there anybody else on the committee that has any questions for Mr. Lin? Go ahead, Donna. Yeah, I, I just want to say just on your questionnaire, you're in a historic district. It said no historic district, but you're in the Greenwich Village Historic District, just so that you know that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. That's you bet. Katie, hey. you, you, Katie, go ahead, Katie. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a little bit confused about how many seats there are because the the pictures don't line up with the plan. So how many seats are at the bar, uh, at the sushi bar? 
Uh, sushi bar, we put the uh, seven, seven seating. Seven seats, but then there were two, sh in the picture, there were two chairs on the short side. Are those used or is that for uh, the that's, uh, Normally we using that one for the customer waiting, like so many people coming for pickup. Okay. Yeah, but- And then, go ahead. Yeah, just if, you know, for a customer, you know, like they they want to, you know, like for pick up uh, or come in, do something, you know, just not not really. Sometimes we don't put it even don't put a chair there. It, it depends, yeah. Okay, well, I it, I saw there was no place setting there, but I was just trying to figure out about the chairs. And then along the wall, how there are seven tables? Are they for two? Are they for four? I I the. Uh, it's, everything doesn't line up. Uh, we put the, uh, the two table together. It's like uh, uh, four, four. Yeah. Like. Uh, so how many seats are there? Uh, it's like. Uh, uh, so it's like. Uh, t uh, ten table, but we put it together. Uh, it's like um, a ten small table. So and with a sushi with, bar. With two each. With yeah, two, two each, each, but then they could come together to four. I, right. I got it now. Okay. Right. And it did, you did say that you would, if that you wouldn't have any lines and you would, might have some sort of a reservation system that people could call in. Can you explain a little bit about what that system will be? Uh, the, we starting with using the, uh, the Yelp, but the, Yao, I we find out it's not so convenient, but right now we switch to the Resi. So people can just, you know, Google our name on the, uh, uh, Google it and it pop out with the, you know, Google with the Resi, just, you know, very convenient to make a reservation on, on the Google. And, and the closing hours are going to be 11 p.m. every night that you're open. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. I think that's it, right? Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on this application? If so, could you please raise your hand? Nobody? Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Lin, um, we, we, we prepare uh, a stipulations. I don't know how familiar you are with, it, with that. Um, uh, it, it, it basically, the stipulations will indicate that you are what you say you are uh, going to be in terms of your business. And it, it basically says you can't, you're not going to be a bar or a nightclub in, in your hours of operation will say what the, what you have indicated. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, because that will be coming your way. Uh, and it will be, you'll, you'll need to sign and notarize it and get it back to our office. Um, but the person from our office who's been emailing you back and forth will be the person in, uh, that, that will be sending that to you, okay? Oh, okay, yeah, got okay. it, yeah. If you have any questions about it, you can always get back in touch with us and we would be glad to explain anything, uh, any questions you may have, okay? Okay, okay, got it. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for, for being, uh, I, I, saw, I saw you were here on Tuesday night and, and, and thank you for coming Tuesday and Thursday, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank You're you. Bye-bye mm. now. Bye-bye. Mm. Okay, now uh, I want to go back. I, I missed Perry Street Project, LLC, 176 Perry Street. If you're here on that application, can you please raise your hand? Okay. I'm going to let you do all the raising, Donna. We're coming up. Okay. Jeremy. And Martin Mailer's in here too. I don't know if you can I'm, see me. I can hear you, Martin. I can't see you. Uh, I, I, let me, hold on. I, oh, wait, 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 wait. I can't I'm hear sorry. you. All right, now, now you got me. We got you. So, so uh, All right. I, one, one second, Martin. Uh, Jeremy, uh, can you unmute yourself? I just want to make sure it works. Say something. Yeah, I think there's a problem with your with your audio. Take your take your time. Let's. I just want to make sure everybody's got their audio straight here, and then we'll go. Apologies. Can you hear me? We got you now. That's it. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Miller. All right. My name is Martin Miller. I'm an attorney. I must apologize. I'm I'm losing my voice. Uh, coughing up. A, I I don't know what is wrong with me, but I'm going to check it out when I finish here. 
In any event, um, this is a corporate change application. This is one of um, Jean Georges' restaurants. It's been around since 2005. It's called Perry Street. Uh, the only Jean Georges was there yesterday. Jean Georges will be there today. Jean Georges will be there tomorrow. Same staff, same food, uh, same everything. Uh, the only thing, the only reason we're coming before the board is because he's rearranged his corporate structure. And that's it. There's no change to anything that's associated with Perry Street. Okay, and and I, I I mean there's there's nothing just so we're clear there's so everybody has no there's nothing outside there's no you know sidewalk cafe here, uh, we're, yeah okay I, I think I think we're pretty familiar with the location. Um, I mean, it, it's one of the most preeminent restaurants in New York, and, and uh, helps to stay that way. So I'm going to open and and, and uh, you know I appreciate you guys waiting a little bit here. Uh, I had to take the the. The things that were from last month, so it took a little bit of time. I uh, appreciate your patience. So, anybody from the committee have any questions? Go ahead, Katie. I have uh, just two questions. Well, one's a question, one's a comment. Um, will you be putting the tables back on that patio in the summertime? I mean, it's not on the sidewalk or anything, but you have that outdoor space. I believe, uh, yeah, Jeremy, you can answer that. You, you're on mute, Jeremy. Yeah, he's He's having audio issues. Go ahead. Oh, well, it, it, yeah, the, the answer, I, I asked him myself. Uh, the answer is yes. Okay, great. And the other thing is I always like to see the price points. You sent the menu, but, uh, you know, I've eaten at your restaurant. I know what the, the price points are, but it's always nice to get them in the packet, too. I, I'm sorry. I and mean, if you want, we, we can no. get them, too. No, I know what the price, but I'm just letting you know. I, I was looking for them and didn't see them. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Donna, do you have your hand up? No, no, that's it. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much. I, I'll, I'll forward on Bob, to- you're gonna go to the public just to- Oh, that's right. Questions. Is there anybody here from the public that would like to speak on this application? Thank you, Donna. I see no hands, so you're good. Yeah, okay. I'll, 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 I'll sip you off the stipulations, uh, Mr. Mueller. Uh, and, and thank you both for uh, your patience and your time tonight. Thank you very much. Everybody have a happy new year. Yeah, and feel better, okay? I'll, I'll try, I really will. Okay. Take care, bye-bye. Okay. Okay, next up is going to be uh, the Beer Garage 2. Uh, this is a uh, on-premise uh, license, uh, 118 Christopher Street. If you're here on that application, can you please raise your hand? I don't see anyone. Let's just give it a second here with the yeah. technology. Beer Garage 2. Beer Garage 2 at 118 Christopher Street. If you're here on that application, please raise your hand. And I don't, I also don't see the applicant on here. Okay. I see uh, there's someone did raise their hand, was, but then put it down. Okay. Because, yeah, if they're not here, oh, I, I see. Hold okay. On. Hey, Quinn. Okay, go. Kate, we could raise her up. Okay, let me just uh, let me just allow her to talk. It's just faster, if okay. that's okay. Yes. Okay. Kate, you should be able to talk. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm opposed to this application uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, their uh, uh, questionnaire uh, to CB2 was in many ways uh, not accurate. They said our neighborhood, this neighborhood is not a historic place and uh, among other things. And uh, I, I'm concerned about uh, this uh, establishment getting an OP and the very, uh, they've had terrible, terrible uh, sheds on the street. And I, th I think that they would be uh, a very negative uh, addition to our neighborhood. I, I do not believe, 
as I understand, the uh, AB, uh, the, the ABC uh, 500 foot rule uh, uh, statute that they're entitled to an OP. Okay, and by OP, you mean on premise? Yes, thank you. You bet. Uh, I also see, uh, and just so you know, Ms. Quinn, you know that they did not appear tonight, or at least they haven't appeared. That, but, but we definitely want to hear from everybody. I just, I didn't know if you knew, understood that. I, I do. I do understand. Okay, Ms. Baisley, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Bob. And I will agree with my friend, Ms. Quinn. And uh, I want to go on the record whether or not these folks are appearing. And I hope they don't plan to, to go straight to the state. Uh, without passing go here. As as you know, this has been laid over several months, but when it was first on in November, I sent you my objections with pictures of their operation and showing how they um, have paid absolutely no attention to the stipulations that got them the beer and wine license. They This is... <sighs> This block of Christopher Street is 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 in a sad state, and they are one of the worst uh, performers on the block. As I'm sure I don't have to tell you, uh, they have uh, their windows open, which they had stipulated to keep closed. They have uh, seating on the sidewalk, which they stipulated not to have. They have loud music playing and TVs pointed outside. Um, these are not good operators. Uh, in fact, I wish that the SLA would police the, what they've already said they, they were going to do. Uh, but in any event, they should not be given an upgrade. And uh, thank you for letting me have my say. Thank you. Uh, and I see Mr. Hope, you're here also. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Just please get them to get rid of that shed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think that does it on that application. Um, and, and just so you folks know, I will recall it just to make sure that there's nobody here later on tonight. But uh, uh, I'm glad that we got to hear from 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 the people that are here. Okay, so uh, next up is going to be Saint Sabino. Uh, the DBA is pending. It's 113 Greenwich Avenue. If you are here on this application, please raise your hand. I see Jennifer and Scott. Um, that's, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's both Angie okay. Rito and Scott Tessinelli on this one. Yeah. Okay, so Angie and Scott on one picture, and then we have Jennifer in the other. So so go ahead, guys. Why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us what the application is about? Great. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I'm Jennifer Rackoff. I'm counsel on behalf of St. Sabino, and um, I'll introduce Scott and Angie in a minute, but let me just um, tell you a little bit about our application. This is in connection with a new liquor license for a restaurant at 113 Greenwich Avenue. Um, we plan to have 52 seats indoors and one bar with 12 bar seats. Um, we're at, we would um, have a sidewalk cafe that's just on the sidewalk, not on the roadway, with an additional seven tables and 22 seats. Um, we would only have background music, no live music. Our hours of operation would be um, Sunday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 12 a.m., and Thursday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. We've um, conducted significant community outreach in the neighborhood, and we've received um, approximately 75 signatures in support of our operation. And we also reached out to all the neighborhood block associations and received favorable responses. Um, I wanna introduce Scott and Angie who are our principals and chef partners who also uh, operate Don Angie, which is a restaurant 
uh, right down the block from 113 Greenwich. Um, and they can talk a little bit more about our concept. Hi, happy new year. So we're Scott and Andy, excuse me, we're a, um, we're a husband and wife chef, uh, chef couple uh, that as John mentioned, we operate um, Don Angie, sort of like right next to where this space is um, on Greenwich Avenue. And um, our, our hope for this new, uh, this new space is to create like sort of an all day um, little more casual restaurant than what um, Don Angie is, um, an accessible price point. Um, we, we typically cook like Italian American cuisine. Um, so kind of our style of cuisine, um, a little bit like seafood leaning concept. Uh, but we really love the block. We really love the neighborhood. Uh, we've been really um, lucky uh, with Don Angie. We've been really well received by the community. We um, retained a Michelin star at Don Angie um, this year. So yeah, that's, that's us. Great, uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so, I mean, I, I know you guys have been in front of us before. I certainly remember you. Uh, and um, so, so, so in terms of the sidewalk cafe, um, I just, the way the diagram it, it indicates, um, mm -hmm. you know, I just wanna make sure that, um, that that's how the sidewalk cafe is actually going to operate. In other words, uh, what we've been seeing uh, quite frequently is uh, tables and chairs spread out, uh, planters, all sorts of things, uh, other obstacles uh, that are placed further out and not in the nice neat rows that exist on the diagram. And I just want to make sure that you know, because in terms of the sidewalk and in, in, in the, in the in, you know the room on the sidewalk. That that that's exactly so. In other words, if there's stipulations, it's going to be that it's going to be pursuant to the diagram and with the numbers of tables and, and chairs. And I just want to make sure that 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 is going to happen here. Absolutely, yeah, it's it's accurate. That's the way it was uh, previously operated. Okay, it, it, it exactly what and, and I I'm sure in the past it, it had been approved by our uh, not just our committee but um, by our sidewalk cafe committee. Uh, and I just want to make sure that the, that the diagram, because I don't see any planters and I don't see, you know, uh, barriers, which sometimes they show up. Uh, and I'm, I'm just hoping that it's going to be exactly the way the diagram indicates. So the, the barriers, I mean, there will be like rope and stanchion, which we put in the application, but not any yes. other barriers. There, it's not a huge sidewalk. There's not a lot of space. That, and that, that's why I bring it up because I just I, that, that's why I bring it up because I want to make sure that it is actually yeah. nobody's going to be uh, if you want a separation uh, of some sort between the sidewalk seating and the uh, but but I mean a waiter still needs to get into or a waitress needs to get into the area that takes up room uh, yeah. to serve the tables even though they're up against the, the wall uh, and um, so anyway that, that, I just want to make sure that that's clear uh, because we, that's something we've been dealing with a lot, uh, not, not necessarily in this particular location, but in, in other locations. Okay. And then, um, the other thing is, is, uh, and I, I, you know, I'll bring it up right off the bat is, you know, because we've, I'm sure we've done this before 12 and one and you've got 2 AM. So, I mean, is there, can you, can you at least compromise, uh, down to 1 AM on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that I think that uh, I know Katie's going to disagree with me, but. I just, I guess she's, she's going to make a, uh, she's going to bring up Thursday night, but, um, but it, it, is that something that, that you would be agreeable to? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just okay, want to make right. sure because it's 2 a.m. and I just, uh, yes. I, okay. I appreciate that. Um, uh, okay. Um, that is. I know there's something else here, but I can't remember right now, but I'll open it up to anybody else if they have any questions. Katie, go ahead. So I'm just going to be very clear that it's the 1 a.m. is only Friday and Saturday. Midnight, so, five days and 1 a.m. two days. So, so Katie, Katie is, is, is uh, indicating that uh, would you, would you read to the 12 on Thursday, I think is what she's indicating. Uh, I mean, if that's what it takes, to, to, I, 
Thank sure. you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Great. We, I mean, we, we do have a 1 a.m. at Don Andrews. Yeah, I was going to say. I I did. Did. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, did I cut you off, Katie, or did I cut you off, Scott? No, no, that's great. And and the windows are going to be closed. They, they, they don't. Be, oh, I did want to bring up that we that we do have, you know, the reason why we had later hours Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we're replicating the hours that we have at the other restaurant, which is, you know, on the other corner. So. But, okay. All right. That, yeah, I, that, is, it's certainly something that can be discussed, and I appreciate you, that, the fact that you guys are even open to it. Okay? Okay. Uh, Donna, uh, do you have it up? Yeah, I just had one thing. Are you installing operable windows, or no. are there? You're not. Are there no. operable windows? Because that it no. said that you might be on the application. So I thought I saw that. We have no plans to. I I don't, I don't even think we could. It's a landmark building. Okay. Sure. Okay. Fine. And the sidewalk closes at eleven. Correct. PM for the sidewalk. Okay. Great. Thank you. Great. Uh, any, anybody else? I don't see anybody else. Okay, so is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this particular application? If so, please raise your hand. And we'll bring you up. I don't see anybody. Okay. And so, so the Michelin star uh, for <laughs> for the other restaurant. When, when did you guys get that? You got it very shockingly in 2020. Yeah. And then during, in the middle of COVID, we were awarded it uh, on a video call with Massimo Batura, actually, from, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's- I, I do famous, not, but that's very, okay. <laughs> very famous Italian, probably the most famous Italian chef in the world operates the number, it was awarded the number one restaurant in the world in, in Modena, Italy. And then- But then we retained it this past and year. And then we retained it again. Really. So, yeah. So, so I really want to congratulate you then, because I, I, you know, I, I sometimes I, I, you know, I, I don't appreciate things like that quite the same way as other people do, and especially you because you're in the business. But I do know it means a lot, uh, and um, so I, I you. give you my my, my congratulations. Thank on you that. very much. We're Thank very so honored much. to have been awarded it. Yeah, yeah. and I, and I well, hopefully we'll get we'll get another one. Okay. <laughs> can you get michelin double star or no, just michelin star. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but but uh, i appreciate you guys coming out i think we did it on this application and uh and, and thank you jennifer great thank, thank you all good night right. okay next up uh is one seven seven First Avenue LLC. Uh, the DBA is to be announced uh, and it's at 18 Cornelia Street. If you are here on that application, please raise your hand. Emmeline, Emmeline is that, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Emmeline? Emmeline, like Caroline. Emmeline, like Caroline, Emmeline. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, well, I'm, uh, is there anybody else with you? I thought there was, <laughs> but um, I one of them was traveling, so I imagine he might be having some travel issues. Okay. Um, do, you, do you want to, uh, I have another, one other application. Do you want to see if that other person needs to arrive or? That's okay. I don't need to take up any more of your time. So we can go ahead and get started. Um, okay. so so, um, we are, uh, my name's Emeline. I currently operate, my partners and I currently operate Silver Apricot at 20 Cornelia Street. So this application is for the space right next door at 18 Cornelia, which is the Pearl Oyster Bar space, previously the Pearl Oyster Bar space until October. Um, we're, the DBA is going to be a figure eight um, and it's the new Chinese American concept that, that will highlight the lower Atlantic coast through a Chinese American lens. So there's a very similar through line um, with Silver Apricot next door. Um, we're looking, we cur I think it's about 45 seats right now, um, and we're looking to operate seven days a week um, lunch and dinner service. So 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then 5 p.m. to uh, 12 a.m. Um, I believe we'll, like any other restaurant, have to start with limited hours before we really dive into the full hours. Um, 
and the menu is in the application and uh, it is also largely the team that is currently operating Silver Apricot as well. Okay, and um, I, I, okay, so do you, do you have an on-premise license next door? Yes, we have um, we have it at Silver Apricot. Okay, and how um, long is, how long has that business been in, in, been there? We've been there. Um, we we I, I believe we came before you a couple of years ago, but um, we've been open since June twenty twenty. So we we're coming up on three years now. Okay, so the, the I guess there's been a you know this particular block. Uh, has been in the news at least with regards to the sheds uh, and and uh, what's been going on in the sheds on this particular block. So so this shed uh, was one I think was planned to be taken down, uh, but you, you folks uh, are going to take over the shed or are you going to remove the shed? The roadbed one from Pearl is still there, so we don't currently have plans to remove it. Um, but kind of like what. Um, what the guys at Banter were saying too, we're more than happy to comply with, you know, if the city wants us to, wants us to take things down, we're more than happy to do so. Um, they're definitely, the, what Pearl left definitely needs some restoration um, and there needs to be more security there. So that's something that we're definitely going to be doing. Right, but I guess, I guess this, I mean, you're looking to open up a new business the new business was never subject to COVID like the business that was there before that used the shed. Uh, and, and I know there's objections from the block association with regards to the shed. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I guess, you know, they're, they're, it would definitely be raised uh, when there's a discussion tonight uh, at our committee. I mean, is that something that you absolutely need to have? You need to have this shed uh, it's something that we've been talking about for a long time, both for our current space and for 18 Cornelia. Um, it's something that we deal with on a daily basis because whether we like it or not, there are guests that do have comorbidities and are elderly or are just still not comfortable dining inside right now. Um, there's actually a neighbor that lives next door and he only dines in our outdoor space um, currently at Silver Apricot and won't come inside. So we just want to be you know, I, I do think that there is potentially a future where they where they completely disappear. Um, I, unfortunately, I feel like it's just it might just be too soon right now, given the state of things. Um, but that said, we are always having conversations with the neighbors. We have had a conversation with the block associations. Um, and it's something that we do want to continue working with them on. I know that I know that there have been um, there have been concerns about vermin and we are bringing on, we have an exterminator that comes to the to the restaurant um, on a regular basis for just for maintenance and we're adding on services for outside as well. Um, our team does make sure that it is clean on a daily basis, um, but the new space we definitely need to, like I said, restore and, and secure. Okay. I guess uh, I, I, so. I, so 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 so. In essence, the shed is 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 something that that you you're not willing to take down. It's it's, it's part of your application, and, um, uh, and and there's no compromise on that front. Is the, the compromise is that you would take down a portion of it? I mean, is well, there? A, I mean, sorry, go ahead. I guess the, the, on this particular block, there's been more controversy than anything on the sheds. There's been all sorts of crime <laughs> taking place inside the sheds on this particular block. And so, I mean, it's been in the news. So- uh, Oh, trust me, I know. <laughs> so so I, I guess I, I, I just wonder about the shed. Uh, I think that, uh, it, you know, there was never a shed there before COVID <laughs> and uh, the business operated uh, without a shed, and and then you know, COVID is pretty much uh, on its way out, uh, and yet we're still hanging on to sheds. Um, I, so, I, bottom line is, is this is something that you're not willing to withdraw. You're not willing to take down the shed with regards to this application. We not not currently. Um, I think that you know 
one, it has been a lifeline to us at Silver Apricot, but that's a completely different story than than this new space. Um, secondarily, you know, we were having a conversation with Pearl um, or Rebecca, who was the who was the chef owner of Pearl, um, and Pearl had been doing pretty poorly, um, and it really only allowed her to extend. The, that roads the roadside space really only allowed her to prolong her closure um and so ultimately even you know she really really struggled um you know this is a conversation that we also had with the with the community or with the block associations um earlier which is that unfortunately we're still trying to figure out our, our way around one covid not being completely gone yet um and two cost of oper like the cost of operations has just gone up astronomically um you know it's wild that 20 in 2020 a case of butter cost us 90 dollars and now it costs us 200 um and it's just, like a case of scallions used to cost us 25 dollars and now it costs us 96 it's just it's insane and um whether it's you know we, we've been trying to figure out like how do you make a business operate but also serve the neighborhood that you're in and i think that if you, it, it's i could not fathom like doubling the prices on dishes <laughs> um just to make up for the cost of what it, the cost of of getting the material the materials and the um and the overhead so i think that like what we're trying to do really is to make decisions based on as much data as we can gather and at present, we just don't know um, what and how COVID is going to pan out in that sense. Um, but like I said, it I definitely see a future where where they are gone. And and so it, the there's an open streets on on Cornelia Street. So have you been have, at the Apricot or the Silver Apricot? Have you been taking advantage of putting tables and chairs out on the street uh, with the open streets? No, we don't have we don't have the space set to do that. Um, we just have the frontage to do the patio. Well, don't when they close the street off, can't you can't you put tables and chairs outside? Um, not really, because people don't respect that, and they move the barriers and drive down the street anyways. Okay, so it was, it was actually none, kind none of a, the, none of the restaurants use the outside for. Uh, their tables and chairs when on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Mm -mm. Okay, uh, because I know it's done elsewhere. Uh, that's why. Yeah, I'm... even on Jones, just on the other side. Yeah, they have a they have a closure that put tables on the out on the out, on the street. Right, but you have that opportunity. I mean, you could do that. You could put tables and chairs outside on the weekends. Um. Yeah, but that would I I we would have to make sure that there's compliance to not remove to not move the barriers but we've we had so many issues I, it was last summer or two summers ago um where drivers would just walk out of their cars and move the street closure barriers and drive through so we had to stop doing that but so the structure protects people that that you're thinking is that the structure protects people they're more willing to be in the structure versus outside the structure i mean you could yeah it is it is a safety issue there were a couple of times where i and some members of my team had to chase drivers down to yell at them and say you can't do that okay uh all right uh, i'll open it is there anybody from the committee that has any questions uh and then i'll open it up to the public Carter had his hand up and then I have my hand up. I, I, just a quick question is this application is for a restaurant wine license or for an on-premise liquor license? It's for an on-premise beer and wine license. So it's just beer and wine. Okay. Yeah. It's it's not noted properly uh, on okay. our I, agenda. I, I, I have on-premise. So you, you're telling me this is not for an on-premise license? It is for an on-premise license. No, no, no. It's an on-premise liquor or on-premise beer and wine? Is it a restaurant wine license? It is a restaurant wine license, yes. So it's an on-premise restaurant wine license, and that's what the previous establishment also has Correct. that they're wine. seeking to change. And it's also what the establishment next door, your current establishment at 20, also has a restaurant wine. That's I just wanted to clarify that because uh, it's that it's it's not marked. Yeah, I mean that's significant difference, but that's uh, yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Carter. Appreciate that. It, it, okay, so we're we're clear. This is restaurant wine. Yes, this is the. It should be the exact same as the previous establishment. Okay, because it is a transfer, and and what was there was restaurant wine. Okay. All right, uh, Donna, go ahead. I just wanted to talk about the roadbed again because you know that those were put there for people initially that were had to close their restaurants during COVID and lost the income and needed the seating. This is a new space for you. Uh, there's a likelihood that the roadbeds won't be allowed on some of these streets. They'll certainly be, be different if they are. And um, the in my mind, the business model sh should work without roadbeds but i i would consider eliminating that roadbed if if you can because it, it, you've heard already from the community that they don't like them cornelia street is has been a problem and uh and you were not operating this restaurant during covid you needed to recoup the losses so that's my two cents on the on the roadbed situation Katie has her hand up. Go, go ahead, Katie. Um, I I didn't see any prices on your menu. What is what's the average check going to be that you're anticipating? We expect somewhere between sixty-five and seventy-five dollars a person. With with uh, with uh, liquor or without? With with beer and wine. Okay. And, you know, I've been looking at those pictures all day. I was away for a few days, so I couldn't walk over. It looks as if that shed extends beyond your restaurant from the picture. I don't, the, the picture from the street, your restaurant has the white door and the white windows, right? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. The shed goes beyond the white painted area. So it, I, I, no, but the, so there's a yellow door. The front door is yellow. I see what I see what what you're looking at. Um, it's it's a bad angle, but it the front door is yellow, which is which kind of like. Is that the front door of of the building or of your restaurant? No, of the restaurant. Okay, and, 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 and just so we're clear, the, sh the shed next to the Pearl Oyster shed is the shed that belongs to the, uh, to the other restaurant, correct? That's correct. Okay, and they, they, they are side by side? Yes. Okay. Um, Katie, I did, are you done? I, I, I'm, I've got, I'm gonna look at the picture again. I'll, I'll hold for now if I have okay. a question. I'll let someone else go, please. Okay, I think that's everybody. I, I'm going to open it up to the public. Uh, if there's anybody here uh, would like to speak on this application, please raise your hand. Lee Farnson, I've got a number. Hi, Leif. Leif, you should be able to unmute yourself and turn on your camera. Leif, can can you unmute yourself and turn on your camera? Okay, Kathy, can you unmute yourself? Okay, so one of you has to mute yourself back up if you're both in the same yeah room. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lee. Okay. Um, the one thing that I wanted to uh, uh, mention was that. Leaf, we're, 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 Leaf, we're having problems with the technology. We can't hear you. Yeah, there's an echo. Come on, this one. Yeah, so you, you, guys, you guys are on this. You should cancel one of the phones. 
<laughs> okay, try this one now. There we go. Okay, there we go. We're both here. <laughs> there you go. Much better. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for taking time, everybody. Um, hi, Emmeline and everybody. Um, uh, one thing that's uh, you mentioned was that Pearl had been doing poorly. Um, and that was just for for uh, you know extending their time to close and so forth. I just want to share something. In July of 2021, I had a, a good conversation with a chef who I would speak to almost daily because we we practically lived out of Pearl uh, for years. But in particularly with with COVID and all of that going on, we were we were out of there two or three times a week ordering out. They're right um, across the street from us. They're across the street from us, and so we we knew everybody, and we we had a good relationship with everybody there, um, and um, up until a certain point in time, um, right around when you were having the problems with your shed, Emmeline, right around there, uh, things started to go south. But before that, for many years, decades, actually, since they opened, we always had a great relationship. Um, but one thing that the chef told me, this was in July, we were wondering about the sheds, you know, what they were planning to do with it, how long they were going to stay. And he was very open about it. He said, listen, we made we made back all our losses from COVID. They had been doing booming up, you know, up by that time. There was just a constant stream of orders coming through there. And he said, we're just we made uh, we made all our losses back at this point, and we're just making bank until September. We'll probably likely close the shed in September and go back to operating inside. Um that was in that was in 2021. They were doing a roaring business out of there. I just don't buy that 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 um, that characterization of their business unless I saw the books <laughs> from what we saw and the amount of money we were spending there and and many of our friends who also there and around this neighborhood. I mean, it was a hot spot. They were doing a lot of business, so that just didn't that really didn't uh, make any sense to me. I'm aligned. Sorry, but it just didn't. Uh, so that so, is just what Rebecca told me. And also, I'm sorry to interrupt. Hold, really hold, hold on, Emily. Um, hold, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, we don't I'm, want to go back and forth. We're, so, Leaf, if you could just, you said you you and Kathy live next door or across the street. Okay. Right. I don't, have you, just for clarification, are you for this application or are you against this application? I I'm sorry, can I have Robert, my partner, just texted me and said he's raising his hand to try to get in. I just well, wanted to ask I appreciate that, Emily. We'll definitely get, but I Sorry. don't think you really, you didn't introduce yourself. So I don't really, you know, you would write into the, 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 the uh, some of the statements that was being made. So why don't you introduce yourselves and, and, and indicate whether you're for or against the application. I, I couldn't tell actually. Okay. So our big concern, as we've discussed, is the shed. And actually both sheds, but we're not talking about Silver Apricot tonight. We're talking about the new restaurant. Right. Um, and when Pearl closed, that shed was supposed to come down. It's been, I mean, we did not, we don't think that it's right that a shed could automatically goes to the next restaurant. It was supposed to come down within 30 days of Pearl closing. And we don't think that the new restaurant should just be able to move right into that shed or have any right to it or have a right to it it's public space and uh we just don't uh, as far as we're concerned or what we've heard the dot is still planning on taking it down so i just wanted to make that clarification but okay. and and Did and you with, say the dot is is look was looking to take it down where, That's what they were told. Originally, they were going to take it down. And then we heard that Rebecca had gotten in touch with them and told them not to take it down because somebody new was moving in. So then the DOT stopped. They, they didn't take it down. Then we have gotten in touch with DOT and heard now that they are planning on taking it down. We don't know which way. And we, we're not sure right now which way it's going to go. But we feel that the shed should come down. It's it's uh, Cornelia Street needs to be cleaned up. We have many issues here, many problems, and uh, we the Central Village Block Association and the Carmine Street Block Association and the West Village residents all spoke with Emmeline, and we requested 
that the shed come down because it's not it's not helping the street come back from from the pandemic. You know, the street is a mess and we don't need the shed anymore. And, uh, you know, we want our street back. Got it. OK, I, I just want to make clear and, and, and Emmeline, um, I, we can't, I don't know if we found your partner. Uh, his this. name his name is Guy. He said that he raised his hand. Yeah, we have it. I don't see it. Uh, oh. And that's why. OK, I see his it's Guy Gladstein. That's correct. OK, so his hand is not raised, but I do see him on promoting him. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you guys off. I just wanted to make sure he heard everything. No, no, understood. And um, I just don't want to go back and forth. That's all. That's uh, to keep to keep the meeting going. OK, um, I. I are you guys done? I'm sorry, Lee, Lee and Kathy, are you done? Oh, I, th I think the point here is, is that we, how can we be supportive of this application if we can't get Emmeline and her group to, uh, to um, have consideration and be, uh, make some sort of commitment to us to say, yeah, the shed's coming down. If their uh, position is just going to continue to be, well, we're just talking about it and we're looking at it, that's not good enough for us. I'm sorry, but that's all we've heard which is only one conversation. Um, there's been no other conversation. We're here, um, but hearing Emmeline again tonight, it's kind of the same thing that we heard two weeks ago, which is, well, we're thinking about it. And if somebody actually makes us take it down sometime in the future, then we'll think about it. It's okay. Our position is it's not their shed. I, we don't understand why they would have any right to it. It's well known that we've been trying to get uh, our street back from the uh, problems of the sheds since the pandemic has receded. And we just don't see that we're getting any, any um, really any appearance of, of really caring about that from Emmeline and her group. And I'm sorry, but that's just the way we've, we're feeling about it. We would love to support it. We want a successful business in there. We said that very clearly on the Zoom, uh, everybody would. And we would like to, you know, be customers and we would like to be welcomed through the doors. We don't want to walk, you know, down the street with a long face or pass anybody or, you know, and we're not going to live like that either. We won't. We're open. We're here. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, thank you thank very much. You. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I have, have a question for them. Yes, go ahead, Katie. A unless Dr. Smith has a question for them. I, I, I didn't realize that. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get Dr. Smith next. Go ahead, Katie. Okay, um, so Leaf and Kathy, does the sh is the shed just in front of Pearl? They keep looking at this picture, and it seems as if it extends beyond Pearl. What no, do you it's say? Pretty, Emma it's, Line it's, says it's just in front. It's in front of yeah. Pearl. It also covers the um, the residential doorway. Like there's there's actually three spaces there. There's Lizzy Go. There's the entranceway door for the residents. And then there's the two spaces. One is pearl, and then next to that is silver apricot. So, the, so it the does. Pearl, it is in front of the residential door. It's not just in front of the storefront. It's not just the storefront. It also goes in front of the residential door. Right. Thank you for clarifying. That's very helpful. Thank you. And Dr. Smith, go ahead. Yeah, I am going to wait to other people speak because I will have a direct question to Emmeline when I hear. From the other I'll, I'll definitely come back to you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. So um, uh, next up, I, just, I had one other point I wanted to make about that shed that has not really gotten much airtime anywhere. Actually, there is one which I which actually started the conversation with the chef um, back in 2021 because we saw that the tree across the street, which is outside of our building, one of the trees. Um, there's two trees in the mid block and they're both outside of this property here. Um, when, when the shed went up, a, a curious thing happened, which was uh, horrifying to us at the time, but it just happened. The shed was built so high and tall that it came out to right to the edge of their allowance. And when trucks come down that street, they overly favor the, the north side of the street trying to avoid the shed. And so when they do that, they're constantly scraping the tree because they're coming so close to the curb. One of the main limbs gets a little, you know, close. So if you've got a full height truck that comes down the street, they keep scraping the tree. And uh, if you go by there, Emmeline, and have a look, you'll see the scarring is tremendous. It's just dug away under that limb on that one particular tree, and specifically because of that shed. Avoiding, and yours as well, the one outside Silver Apricot, 
The trucks come down, they all head to the left side, they're looking, they don't want to hit the shed. And guess what? They're, they're shaving off the, uh, the, the, the tree. That's a problem for us. Okay, thank you, Lee. Uh, uh, I have thank uh, you. David Gruber. Go ahead, David. Uh, hi, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> um, I was uh, at the uh, Zoom meeting uh, uh, that we had with the applicant. Uh, I went there as president of the Carmine Street Block Association, uh, not as a community board uh, member. Uh, and I, I do have a lot. When I read the application, uh, it was full of mistakes. I mean, you caught some of them saying that uh, they were going to transfer, um, you, you know, an on-premise lick license. We know that that can't happen. Uh, also, they say they're in, they have use group six. They don't actually. They're in an R zone. Uh, it's a funny configuration. Uh, it's a split zone lot, and on the split zone, uh, they fall into the R section of the split zone. Uh, I understand there's a restaurant there now. Um, I just want to point out that the application is full of inaccuracies. Um, I understand uh, that uh, restaurants are uh, being hit with large costs, but every restaurant in the city is. Uh, when this applicant uh, took the lease, uh, she knew that, and so did Pearl know, that um, there were no outdoor seating allowed on the sidewalk uh, because the sidewalk was too narrow to accommodate seating. Um, so now we have a situation where um, Emmeline uh, 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 signed the lease knowing that there was no outdoor seating, as did Pearl sign a lease that there was no outside seating allowed. Now um, that full uh, dining is allowed inside was still uh, being said, pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. And I appreciate Emmeline that one of your customers doesn't want to eat inside, but that's, that's a, that's, that's a, a talk to many, many people who want that shed down. Um, as Bob, as you uh, pointed out, there are notorious sheds. Uh, Emmeline's shed was where it, you all saw on TV where it became like a sex, the sex shed. Uh, that's the shed uh, that the city, uh, uh, not closed down, but you know, uh, it was on every newspaper. It was on every TV state, local TV station. Um, and we, we notified her earlier that there was a problem with the shed. Nothing was done uh, on Pearl's, on Rebecca Pearl's shed. Uh, people were sleeping there all night. Uh, it became like a homeless center. Um, she she didn't do anything about it. And Emily, you know, even though we were warned until it was documented by the newspapers and by the TV cameras, nothing was done. And then a kind of a chicken wire fence was put up, a very loose chicken wire fence that could be pulled off easily. I'm saying all this because um, uh, Emmeline says that she needs the shed in order to uh, make her uh, to, to, to make her restaurant profitable. That's actually the profitability of the restaurant is not, our, is not the responsibility of the community. Uh, every restaurant in town is getting uh, uh, raises in, in cost, everybody, not just them. Uh, Pearl was there for, I don't know, 10, 12 years maybe uh, without a shed and she survived. Uh, uh, other restaurants are surviving. You just heard something at, across the street at the old Cornelia Street Cafe. Uh, he's not putting a shed up uh, and he's made a commitment to do that in writing to us. Um, so a lot of restaurants don't have the sheds, don't need the sheds because dining is allowed inside and no one had a gun to any restaurateur who signed a lease before the pandemic uh, knowing that no outdoor seating was permitted. And so we feel a little bit snookered by uh, now that the pandemic is over and saying, oh, we can't make a living, we can't make a profit. I I'm sorry, it's just not the community's responsibility to do that. Uh, the, um, um, uh, I, I also feel that, so I just wanna be clear. So it's not an on-premise license, what we call an OP license, which is a full liquor license. Uh, and Lynn, you're not asking for this, you're only asking for beer and wine. That is correct, right? Yes, I think that's been made very clear. Okay, because uh, the application is not clear to do it. Um, no, it, it definitely was not. And I, I would agree with you on that, but uh, I think it's- Okay, made, okay. Very, um, made very clear tonight. Right, and it's not, in use, there is not use group six on that location as well. Uh, so um, um, I, I think that um, this, um, 
roadway that gets closed on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, it causes havoc in the community, not because of parking or anything else, but like water, what happens is the traffic is not reduced. It's simply relocated uh, to other parts of the village. Bleecker Street becomes a parking lot. It's crazy what's going on here with those things closed. Um, I don't know who's taking it down, but I know that fire trucks and ambulances, you know, remove them, which they should. Emergency vehicles have a difficult time if they have to go onto Cornelia Street. Uh, if you do drive down Cornelia Street when the barricades are not put up, and I don't understand uh, why they're put up Monday to, to, to Thursday, but on Friday and Saturday, they have to close the street. If there's a pathway uh, during the week, why are we closing it on the weekend? I don't understand. Um, DOT wants it open. The police, the sixth precinct has asked for and has received, uh, uh, and they, they asked that Cornelia Street be open. So far, it hasn't been done. We're going to argue, uh, you know, with Eric that this should not be a permanently closed open street. Uh, it's a, an important street and it really blocks up the rest of the community. We appeal to Emily to take the shed down, be a good neighbor. Uh, if she doesn't, you know, uh, she will have an adversarial relationship with, with many of the people in the neighborhood. Uh, it is a breed, and I don't care how many exterminators you bring in, the sheds are a breeding ground for rodents and they're all over the place. Uh, you have to get underneath it, you have to spray it. We had a presentation at the community board um, uh, a year ago by the Department of Health. They say they have to spray underneath the sheds uh, with, uh, with chemicals, uh, but I, I have not seen one restaurant tour take a power wash underneath the shed. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something, but I haven't seen it. So, um, uh, and, and I wanted to say one last thing. When you drive down, the way it works, if you go down Cornelia Street, you have to bear left, and then after you pass some, we're going to we're going to talk to all the sheds, all the restaurants, in, in a week or two, not just Emmeline and, and and the old pearls. But you have to move to the left, and then other sheds who are situated on the left. Then you've got to move to the right. So you're kind of in this little bit of a, uh, a video game down Cornelia Street. And we have to stop that. We have to have the street open. Uh, and I'm sorry, but you knew there was no seating when you signed the lease. That's all I want to say. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gerber. Um, there, Nancy some... Paisley. Nancy, uh, okay. Wait, just wait one second. Dr. Smith, did you have a question for, for... I want to just say that um... We, we uh, David, we sort of urge people, I know you're on the board and you're on your community block association, but we generally would like for you to not necessarily make your comments to the applicant directly like you've done. And um, I'm sorry, say it again, I didn't hear I, you. I just wanted to bring I that to your attention. Yeah, we basically, the, the, the members of the, co of the committee, and we don't even necessarily do that. And we, we don't generally have anyone making direct comments to the applicant as you've done here. And so I just want to just say that. And it's it's just, and I'm, I'm, I thought you were aware of it, maybe you were not. Okay, uh, you know, I didn't come on uh, to this Zoom as a community board member. I was on it for like an hour and a half and I uh, was in the, uh, in the audience. Uh, and I was, someone asked me if uh, I wanted to be elevated, which I did, which is in our new bylaws, by the way, Shirley. And, uh, uh, and so I took the opportunity as a- Yeah, you have every right to, absolutely. That was not the point that I was making and maybe you were not aware and I was bringing it to your attention for the future, that's all. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. We have um, Nancy-, Nancy Go ahead, Nancy. All right, thank you. I'll try to be brief. I want to agree with uh, the previous speakers, uh, my friends, the Aronsons and Mr. Gruber. Uh, just to go back to basics, these outdoor structures were permitted in the first place only because restaurants and bars were not allowed to serve indoors during the, co during the initial stages of the pandemic. Uh, now the interiors are fully open all the time. Uh, th the sheds and the sidewalk seating have hung on uh, without any real reason to stay there, without any real justification. Uh, but they did support 
places that were having a hard time three years ago. There is absolutely no justification for a new place to put up or to uh, use a, a pre-existing shed. Um, and as Mr. Gruber said, the uh, the economics of the situation is not the community board's issue. The economics of the situation is the health of the community. Cornelia Street is a particularly pernicious place. It's narrow, it's crowded, it gets a lot of through traffic, and it has far too much outdoors as it is. This shed should come down. It was scheduled to come down. It should not be handed over to a new place. And in words of one syllable, the shed should go. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paisley. Um, okay, so I think that does it from everybody. No, no. Valerie has her Valerie hand up. Valerie Rosa has her hand up. Oh, Valerie. Okay. I didn't see Valerie. Go, go ahead, Valerie. Hi, thanks. Um, I just wanted to, I didn't know if this got brought up. I kind of came in in the middle of this conversation, um, but that shed is marked for removal by DOT. Um, it was marked for removal December 2nd and it's under um, their HIQA uh, review, which is a, uh, so it's it's been marked for removal and it was marked for pre-removal pre at the end of November. So I don't know if that's factored into into your conversation here it was, um, it was it was brought up valerie but uh not with the specifics that you just provided us mm -hmm. yep that's it okay. thank you thank you yep, thanks leaf you want to say something real quick yeah I'm, I'm just wondering if if the applicant knows anything that we don't maybe she knows something about the what valerie just said because that's was our understanding too but it's also we've heard through the through the um council member's office that the DOT has hesitated on that because there's some sort of conversation that took place between the applicant and the former um, owner who is now uh, retired to Maine. Okay, and when you say the, you, you said council person, you Remember, were speaking. Yeah, uh, uh, Eric, Eric Botcher's Botcher. office, yeah, Nicole Okay. okay. She was okay. investigating it, trying to find out what the holdup was and she was told by the DOT that um, the um, owner of the shed of record, which was still Rebecca Charles, um, said that um, no, don't don't move because the next app, next uh, 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 business is going to take over the shed. So that's that's all we've heard. It's been going back and forth. We, of course, so maybe now the Valerie she says wasn't, maybe it is coming down now. Okay. Maybe that's you know, Valerie has the latest information. I mean, that's just just that's just from the data. Sorry, I don't mean to go back and forth, Donna and Bob. Right. Um, but uh, whether it was marked for removal before or after, changing ownership doesn't change that it wasn't compliant, that it was you know marked for removal. But um, I'm glad that you guys are on it. Thanks. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, okay, so so Emmeline. Um, I want to make sure that your partner is up. Um, okay. Stop. He's up. Okay. So, so if you'd like to respond, please uh, uh, go go ahead uh, to all the comments, whatever you'd like to do. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, Leif, I know as much as you know on that front that we're we know the same exact. That's what you know is what I know. So I don't know anything else more than that. Um, and you know, for, for what it's worth, for anything that was unclear in the application or incorrect, I'm very sorry about that. The, this went through, the last pass went through our attorney who at the time of submitting it was actually dealing with two kids with COVID at home. So her life was a little chaotic. So she might not have gone through it with a fine tooth comb as she should have. Um, as far as, you know, if, if the DOT does come around and it needs to come down, that it is what it is. We just included this in the application because we wanted to cover our bases. Um, yeah, sorry, it says that guy says that he can't call in, but um, I just hope that he can at least, if he might he, send He is actually up promoted as a panelist, so I don't know. There's a guy Gladstein up here promoted yeah. as a panelist. I don't know what, who that is then, who has his <laughs> name, but that's who I've elevated. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, we're just gonna, we'll go with that. Um, 
Yeah, no, he, 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 he's definitely up. Uh, the, the thing is, we don't have a picture and we, his, his, whatever he, he's doing, it's on mute right now. So it's up to him to elevate his situation to video and to- He needs, uh, right. he needs to turn on his video and he needs to unmute himself if he wants to speak. Okay, it's okay. He can also just send me anything if he wants to add it, add it sure. and I can speak for him. Um, I do want to clarify that the 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 security that we have right now, the fencing was placed weeks before the tabloids went crazy over it. They just delayed their publication by several weeks and wanted to make it sensational to sound like to make it sound like they had some effect in, in our changing the way that our changing operations. And that just simply wasn't true. Um, and we have had it professionally power washed several times um, that all of that said, though, um, when it comes to. You know, Kathy, you mentioned having consideration. I, I, I do want to be very clear that we love the street. We love our neighbors. And I do I do hope that you can come. Like, even if you guys came to the restaurant, there would be no animosity. We I know that, you know, just because we don't 100% agree on everything does not mean that we can't be friends. That is, I just want to be very clear about that. Um, and, you know, the things that we did um, at Silver Apricot to change things there were for the consideration of our neighbors and of the street. And we've talked about this at length, so I don't need to really go into that again. Um, and so I think it's all about timing. And when I say that, you know, we are not completely wedded to keeping the roadbed dining. We are just now responding to, again, the consideration, we're having consideration for those that are coming through our doors. We are responding to what people have been telling us, which is there are unfortunately still a subset of people who are not comfortable dining in and we want to be able to cater to them. Um, that's not, probably won't be forever, you know? And I just think that the timing right now is unfortunate because we are still in this transition phase out of the pandemic. And I think that if we were to be having this conversation in six months, it might be a very different conversation. Um, so I just generally want to, you know, I lo we love being on Cornelia, um, absent this, absent this, you know, this conflict, so to speak. Um, we love our neighbors. They've been great supports to us over the last three years. Um, and, you know, we want to, we want to coexist and have happy neighbors as much as I'm sure you guys want to have happy business, happy and healthy businesses on the street. Okay, great. I think that does it. Uh, no, it does. Carter has a stand up. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to go back um, to what David had raised with the, with the materials that were submitted to us. There's a pretty significant um, error, which, which nobody has uh, raised yet, which is that you you say in your materials that you that there's a certificate of occupancy for the building, and um, I'm just pulling it up here. Uh, and let's see, your answer is um, that you have a certificate of occupancy, yes, and that you have an occupancy of 74 people. There is no certificate of occupancy on the building which means that its use has not changed since 1938. There is no letter of no objection issued for the building. The restaurant wine license that was previously here was, was issued in the, in the 90s, the original, when the, that review may not have taken place. I mean, there's, it's unclear if there can even be a business at this location that I can see. And, and, um, and then there's also an incomplete filing on the Department of Buildings website for a job in the building uh, that was raising the occupancy from 10 people to 30. So I, I don't even know what, what you, know, you know, the first question is, are you allowed to be there? And you haven't even satisfied that very basic baseline question. And it's something that has been misrepresented, uh, whether intentionally or not, on on your uh, your questionnaire that you've submitted to us, and I don't see any other documentation that was submitted. I'm 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 not sure if I'm missing something or um, if there's something that I I have not seen. Uh, and and just just because something is built there doesn't mean that that it's an allowed use without that that accompanying documentation. Do, do, do you have we received, Yeah, we received confirmation of a letter of no objection. I just, I've been trying to find it in my email and I can't pull it up, but it was it was filed several weeks ago, if not longer. 
Okay, it, 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 that may be the case. I just don't see it. Yeah, I, can you forward it to our, our community board? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll locate it and I can forward it to you. Okay, is it an application to do it or is it the actual document itself? Uh, it is, let me see if I can find it. Um, let me find it and I'll, and I'll send it to you. Um, can you put in the chat the correct email address to send it to? Yeah, and I'll, so after the meeting. The, the person that you've been communicating, uh, mm -hmm. Eva, uh, yeah, that's who you can send it to. Okay, I'll make sure that goes through. Okay. If I don't have it, if I don't have it, my attorney has it. Absolutely, there should be. There definitely is because we got the questionnaire and we've got other documentation. So, uh, if you could have that forwarded to us, that would, that would be much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Carter, uh, it, does that do it on your end? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, but I guess the, we we just don't have it yet, and and uh, also it, it would be appreciated if you could correct the materials that you've submitted to us um, to to correct all the errors so that we we have correct records in our files. Yeah, I'll have a conversation with my attorney about that as well. Okay. All right. Uh, and then I Dr. Smith, we were going to go back to Dr. Smith. Oh, who... right, right, right. I... <laughs> Okay, you, no pro no problem. I spoke earlier, so maybe that's what Bob was thinking. Um, Emmeline, I've listened carefully with your response, and um, but I've also listened to your neighbors. And you had neighbors who, who said the food was good, they loved your place. And I'm just wondering, why are you not saying you would take that shed down since you know that that is the contention of the of the neighbors. It's not a good way to start, you know, even though you've been there in the other business, it's still not, it's almost as if, I don't know, I, I guess I should reframe the question. Will you take it down and not wait six months? Unfortunately, it's not something that we can completely commit to right now because we have other neighbors as well who are solely dining outside. You know, we, like I said, we really have to respond to everybody that comes to us. May I ask this question before I, I, I stop? What is the capacity inside? 45. What is the capacity in the shed? 20. Okay, thanks. And is Guy going to speak at all? Is is he a, is he a principal? Yeah, yes, he is, um, but he's, some I think he's having internet problems. So. Can I just say what what he, he is you. not he is not listed on our application as a principal. So is he a principal? Uh, he is, but he is not. Yes. Sorry. No, I was just saying you. When I asked the question, you answered in the affirmative. I know, yes. but I'm looking at the questionnaire, and he is not listed as a principal. That's why I'm asking the question that I'm asking. Um, he's not going to be a part of the of the liquor license application. No. What? But he is a part of our operations. And what what is his role in the operations? Managing. So he's managing. So he's not a principal. He's managing. Does he own part of? Is does he have an ownership in in the business? No. Okay. So he's not a principal. Yeah. The the principal's just so we're clear. The principal's listed on the application is Justin. Whites, Stephen Scheider, and Derek Feldman. Um, are, are, you, are you a principal, Emily? I don't know who those people are. I think I'm, you might. No, 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 you're looking at the. I do have oh, scratch. I got the wrong. You're looking at the wrong Cornelius, application. Sorry. It's okay. I, we, you know, we've gone on too long as it is. I appreciate it very much. I think we're done here. And I certainly, it's when I start going into other applications and asking questions, it's definitely time to end it. I understand. Uh, but, but thank you very much, Emily, and everybody else for coming out tonight. Uh, I appreciate all the information, okay? And, and, and everyone's laughing at me, okay. Uh, the last application uh, tonight is gonna be, hold on here. It's on Cornelia Street, and it was formerly the Cornelia Street Cafe. Uh, it is w, WF LLC. 29 Cornelia Street. Um, if you're here on that application, hopefully you are, please raise your hand. Hey, 
Hey, Bob. There we go. All right, Joseph, you you get the get out of jail free card. Uh, <laughs> so you, you can use that the next time. Who else is, is everybody in your office again? Yes, we're here. Okay. Hello. Your office is is a good place to hang, I guess. Okay, good. And and and, and you folks got together with the Block Association to work things out. So we did. I, I really uh, okay. Anyway, I, I don't want I don't want to say anything. I'll say what I need to say offline. Uh, but but you would definitely get the get out of jail free card. Okay. Appreciate that. I'm I'm storing up a collection of them actually. Yeah, uh, maybe so I could redeem them for a bigger prize at some point. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep this short and sweet. We're last on the agenda here. Um, before I jump into the nuts and bolts of the application, I'll introduce my client who um, you mentioned before, Bob, uh, Justin Weitz, who's one of the principals who's here with me. He'll give you a little rundown of the concept and then we'll get into um, some of the specifics of the application. Nice to meet all of you. Um, obviously we're taking over the historic Cornelia Street Cafe space. Uh, a space that we you know respect and want to pay homage to um, while reinventing it a little bit. We uh, we've licensed a uh, concept from one of the best you know restaurant tours in Asia, um, and we're bringing that brand over and mixing it with a culinary program from one of the youngest uh, and best sh rising chefs in the country, three Michelin star chef Mike uh, Bagel, to uh, form an Asian fusion concept, um, but, uh, but still accessible, but while remaining elegant. And then also, again, paying homage to the old Cornelia Street Cafe, which I know means so much to the neighborhood. So the, uh, this is an on-premise liquor license, as we've mentioned in the space that was the Cornelia Street Cafe for many, many years. Um, on the ground floor of the space, you're gonna have 12 tables and 24 seats. In the cellar level, you'll have eight tables with 18 seats. There are two bars inside, one on the ground floor with 11 seats, one downstairs with five seats. Uh, the occupancy is less than uh, 74 each floor. There will actually be much less people than that. However, the CFO that's on file is for 95 between the two spaces. Um, we're not gonna come close to that. We've got a, a total of, I think it's 58 total seats inside. Um, there is sidewalk seating outside right up against the building, uh, seven tables, 14 seats. Um, we submitted a new application to the board office earlier today that memorializes a lot of the changes um, that we have made after consulting with the local block association and some neighbors. Those changes include a change to the hours of operation. The hours of operation um, are now going to be from midnight to 1 a.m. Sunday through Tuesday, midnight till 2 a.m. Wednesday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, noon. Um, there's no outdoor structure here. We'll commit to that in writing that we're not going to build one. We're not going to use any roadbed seating. Um, the nightly close in the sidewalk cafe outside will be 10 p.m. There's recorded background music here only. Uh, and as we've mentioned, we've done a fair amount of outreach, gotten some people in the building, on the block, met with the block associations. And uh, I know David will let me know if, uh, if I missed anything from the list of stipulations that they worked out. Mm -hmm. uh, great. And, and, and just for the committee, um, there are two application questionnaires so in our Google Drive. So, you know, just the confusion, if you're, you know, there's one uh, that was put in uh, later today uh, that uh, Mr. Leiden just spoke about. Yeah, there were a couple of things we wanted to clean up just to make them clear instead of talking about, you know, upstairs, downstairs, first floor cellar, and also the change to the hours um, and some of those additional things we wanted to just clean up and be consistent. Yeah, I just want to make sure there's no confusion on the committee because there are two questionnaires in, in the yep. Google Drive. Uh, uh, so, so I really, really appreciate uh, you folks working things out uh, on the block. Uh, my, my question is, or my my inquiry really is on one area, which is the sidewalk. And um, your diagram, I, I don't, I don't remember there being sidewalk seating there. Uh, we're trying to figure. There was. Out. Yeah. And, yeah, there and, was. And, yeah, and so. And so, you know, the, the diagram that you have doesn't provide the the width or the depth of the sidewalk. Um, and so, I, I my concern is really, I mean, can you really get an eight foot passage 
you know, with the, yes, with the you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of two tops. Run. I'm sure that if there was a sidewalk cafe there, it was two tops right against the building. That's what this is going to be, the two tops against the building. Yeah, we were, we were we plan on keeping it exactly the same as Cornelia Street Cafe had it, you know. Okay, because because the diagram actually has four four tops. There's so, there's two four tops. I mean, they're they're four tops up against the building, and the rest are two tops. Right, but a four top. I don't see how you could fit that on eight feet uh, with the eight feet clearance. That's all. I, I you know, and I don't have depth. There's not no measurement on the diagram. For me to even know what the width of that sidewalk is yeah well we're obviously going to be compliant whatever that is if there's not enough of a pass through there then we'll make those two tops right but in terms of stipulations it's going to be it's going to it's got to say two tops yeah it's got to say two tops against the wall it cannot a four top is not going to work uh, yeah it Cornelia street cafe had four tops there and they were underneath where the awning extends to. I don't know if that helps from a depth perspective to understand what the uh, what the passageway is there. But I think it's clear, I mean, that's a big, that's a big space. Yeah, I just don't know if it's yeah. eight feet. Yeah, whatever it is, it will be what, what are you folks looking at? Uh, just pictures on, of uh, the Cornelia Street Cafe on uh, Google Images that are the most recent. Yeah, I know, the, the problem with that is we don't know if they were even compliant with what, what the, what they were true asking. but we could see the sidewalk slabs to see how wide it is that's kind of what we were trying to, to look at but it's hard to handicap it so i appreciate your point if if you guys are comfortable with all two tops outside and that that makes a difference here as opposed to the four tops and that makes this you know an easy application to approve then you know we're yeah, happy I, with that. I always say that for, for just from my vantage point and i don't speak for everybody else but from my vantage point uh the two tops make a lot more sense simply because i do we don't know what the dimensions are. You know, the diagram doesn't provide us with dimensions. So to, to, to go into it in, in the dark without knowing, um, because if there, I think it's pretty clear there was sidewalk seating there, but generally speaking, uh, they're right. against the wall. It's two, top it's, it's two seats, so I think. Yeah, so two top means, so it would be four, or, or the maximum would be five two tops along the wall. to code. Sorry, I was muted there. And there's not a feet. Because the, the truth is, is the way they have the table, the way they have the tables before, this was always extended this the, the same way. Yeah. But look, if it's not to code, then I would that I would be totally fine. Yeah. And then I won't do it. But if it is to code, then it's yeah, no we, we'd have to take a measurement. I don't know what the measurement is offhand, but we're happy to stipulate that we'll keep it to code and make sure there's the appropriate passageway, whatever that configuration is, whether it's twos or fours. Right. But right. not to exceed that. Uh, it, uh, we need to know that now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying we can't, this is a, on, well, we don't know. We don't know what the dimensions of the sidewalk yeah. is. So yeah, that's, fine. That's, fine. That's, fine. that's fine. Bob, we'll do all two tops against the building outside. Just do the two tops. And if, yeah, and, I got and, it. if there's room, then just let us know. Okay. Of I course. Mean, really. Yeah. That's what we just talked about. So that's, okay. we'll do that. All right. So uh, anybody else from the committee? have any donna go ahead i do and katie does i'm just going to say i know i looked at the google maps and i see cornelia street had those sidewalk cafe tables there but you've got two slabs of sidewalk so that's maybe 10 to 11 feet i think i did not measure them so i'm i'm not sure i don't even know how those those tables that were there i'm not arguing that they weren't there they were there but i don't know how that is to code with eight feet with with people being served with a three foot you know service lane and everything else is there so um the sidewalk seems problematic even though i agree with you that it was it was there before and i the uh, it would be great right, to have right, the measurement right. of that actual sidewalk Katie? I'm going to reiterate what Donna says. We need the measurement of the sidewalk. I have walked by that storefront with tables trying to push a stroller and had to go in the street for many years. So I don't think that you're going to be able to have the passage. And an architect has put in the chat that he doesn't think you're going to have the passage either. So I, I, I'm very dubious that the sidewalk is going to work. 
Um, I always like to see price points on a menu. I didn't see a price point. What is the average check that you're uh, expecting? Well, we haven't started considering you know, that based on, we don't know what the food costs are gonna be yet, but, but the menu is designed to be accessible. Um, you know, it's not fine dining food with a, with a crazy high price point. So what, so I can't think exactly what, it's gonna, what the cover is gonna be, but you know, I, I don't expect a, an average check to be more than $65. Okay, that's what I thought you were going to say. And um, there were no, are there any operable windows on the street? There are French doors here, and the agreement we made with the Block Association was that they'd all be closed by 10 p.m. every night. I, I, I don't like the hours at all. I think they're much too late. This is a very small street. I know you've worked with the um, Block Association, and our colleague David Gruber has spoken to you in, with another hat on. But I, I the, the late your late hours uh, jumped out at me. I know people who've lived in that building and complained about the Cornelius Tech Street Cafe's noise year after year. I've lived in this neighborhood for a very long time, longer than some of you have been alive, I'm sure. And um, so I, I'm very concerned about, you know, not being the 12 and one, which we like and which people across the street are going to have. Yeah, um, so. I, we, we appreciate that. But again, Cornelius Street Cafe was here for, I don't know how many years, 40 years ish. And they had 4 a.m. and they had live music and we're not doing any of that. This is going to be background quiet and much lesser hours. And again, we we worked through it with with the block association, the neighbors, and we got support from people I, in the I, building. I, the I understood all of that. I'm still telling you that I don't like the hours. Sure, I, I appreciate I don't support it. them. Uh, and uh, Brian, do you have your hand up? No. Okay, I I couldn't tell. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, is there anybody uh, from the public that would like to speak on this application? If so, please raise your hand. I have Jeffrey Rowland and Leif and Kathy Arntzen. Uh Hello, I'm back on. Go ahead, Mr. Rowland. Okay, uh, I'm looking at the uh, application and the maps and the uh, drawings for the two tops and four tops. And I find it bewildering it's as if they haven't even been in front of the Cornell Cafe. There's a tree pit right in front of the section that they're going to have a two top in. So there is literally no sidewalk left for pedestrians to walk on in that particular area. And that is right between the two sets of doors where the column is. And I don't see how you can do that. So I kind of feel like the, the applicant hasn't actually been there and looked at the situation. Uh, I think that is a, a big mistake. So they clearly have too many tables for outside. Thank you, That's Mr. Rolls. Thank you. And I did notice the tree and I did not bring that up, but you're absolutely correct. Thank you. Um, and okay, I'm sorry, Kathy and Leaf, go ahead. So um, four of us from three different block associations met with uh, Justin Weitz. And, um, you know, we we really feel that this is going to be a good uh a good restaurant for Cornelia Street because, like we said before, we we're looking to clean up the street and have some nice places there, and uh, we think that they they will be a good neighbor. And we went with the hours because we think it's it's going to be a quiet, fine dining type of restaurant, and uh, we just thought it would add something, uh, and it would just add something to the quality of of the street. Um, we. The Central Village Block Association, Carmine Street, and the West Village residents met with Justin. He took us uh, around. He showed us the changes that they're making, and uh, I think it's really going to be a quality restaurant. And it's not. We didn't think it was going to be the type of restaurant that there would be, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people drinking and carrying on. It, it, it's it's not going to be. We got the impression it's not going to be that kind of place, so that's why we we went went along with those those hours, um, and uh, we we 
welcome them to the street and we wish them luck. Great. I would just share one other thing about just um, anecdotally, as far as the seating outside, and I'm, I don't know what the stipulations were for the previous cafe, but we, we also <laughs> we lived in that place for decades, we raised our family in there and so forth. Mm. Um, but I, if I remember, I thought that they had the okay for two tops where it didn't interfere with those trees you mentioned there. Mm -hmm. um, and, but that they, uh, they put four tops out there and, and either um, just uh, took advantage of no hue and outcry about that um, to operate that way or what have you. I'm not sure what the official okay was, but I know that they did exist there before. But I don't think there's a clear path there for four tops. Um, um, particularly by the tree, but at any rate, it's just my 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 recollection of that. Thank you. Okay, and is there anybody else? I don't think so. Right. Oh, oh also one other thing yeah, that go ahead. One other important um, aspect of what these guys are doing is that it's by reservation. The whole thing is by reservation only. That's an important. Um, um, that's a really important aspect of any of the businesses that come into residential street. If it's by reservation, then just by definition, it already limits greatly just walk-in style traffic or just showing up, well, let's just go here. I feel like it type thing. It's more like a planned type outing for the evening, which is just a very different um, reality in our experience. Yeah, we always had people like from Pearl waiting across the street in front of our windows waiting for tables at Pearl. If they could, if they could get there was no reservations there. But so having by reservation yeah. only does does change. Versus like change. a Ligigo that had was reservations only and they had no lineup because people were coming at their their time. You know, back before the pandemic happened, that was the way that Pearl operated. And you know what? It was it wasn't it was okay because um, they had very limited operating hours and it was kind of understood and there was very, just kind of a respectful scene. COVID changed all that um, dramatically and that became quite an issue for anybody living in those uh, areas on the, off the street next to Pearl where they didn't have that reservation policy, um, which really wasn't a problem for uh, South Africa actually. But any place that's not a reservation only type place, you just have that issue where you've just got on a tiny street, you got people loitering and hanging out and trying to see if they can get in that deal. So if that's not what's happening here. We feel we thought that was an important aspect. Great. Doc, just Dr. Smith, you have your hand up. Is this a question for one of the people? From I, the it's actually just in response to what Kathy and Leaf just said. I get a bit concerned, um, you know, I know that applicants have every right to you know, organize and make their businesses the way they feel that it, it works for them. The other side of the coin though, however, when you have a reservation only, is that then what did you say to people who just might not know and just show up? And that this can be, you don't have to have an answer. It's just something that I always think about when that when those kinds of decisions are made by um, by a, 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 an applicant, of course, it makes it easier for them. And as you're saying, Leaf and Kathy, you know, you won't have a long line, and you know, and it might be something that you consider to be a plus. But uh, the other side of it is too is that it also can be seen as somewhat a bit discriminatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have a good answer to that, Dr. Smith. If you'd like us to to jump in and answer it directly. If you feel the need to respond, that was my response. You go right ahead. So absolutely, we are planning on doing reservations, but we'll also, we will also anticipate that there will be times where people do walk in and try to get a seat. In those situations, we would take their number and give them a time and tell them we'll call them five minutes or so before their table is ready. So there's no to, to minimize loitering on the street. Uh, we also will have a strict plan with the front of house management to make sure that nobody is congregating outside standing up in front of the uh in front of the space so it's not that walk-ins won't be possible it's just that if they are in those situations where there isn't a table ready to decrease loitering we would take someone's number and say we'll text you or call you up to call you when your table's ready so that they're not 
standing around. Was that you, Joseph, speaking? I just want to say thank you to whoever made the response. I can't quite tell. Is that you, Joseph? That it was me who jumped in and said that we had a response. Oh, okay. And okay. it was and the applicant the was the one that who, Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. I think we did it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Bob. I, I, I was oh, just looking at the, I was Garth. just looking at the history here, <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm not sure how they had a sidewalk cafe there previously. A couple of reasons. One, it's in an R zone. I don't know if this is if there's some sort of commercial corridor that it was within that that it had an allowance for a sidewalk cafe. It looks like the sidewalk's only ten feet wide. Um, they're not twelve. Uh, which which I believe is the is the minimum requirement for the previous licenses and the diagram I'm looking at that they had submitted seems to show that that they were perhaps saying that there was a stoop line that was theirs but I don't see that in any of the city documents that there's it's a straight street frontage all the way down so I just bring that up because I there there are clearly some problems here and if if it is in fact 10 feet um, and there's a service aisle requirement in the future and there's an eight foot clearance, it's gonna be very difficult to include outdoor seating here. And um, yeah. and I, so I just bring that up. So there's, there are issues there. Right now there's no service aisle requirement. So, and I don't think that that will be part of a permanent program, just just with the clearance requirements. So I'm just bringing it up now um, because I, uh, you know, it's difficult to write stipulations for something that's temporary now when when these when these measurements don't seem right. And um, so, I, and and also the Central Village Block Association had presented many, many complaints regarding the previous sidewalk cafe at this location, uh, including one of our board members who, who was not a board member then, uh, Susan Gammy. Um, so I'm just bringing that up. Thanks. Okay. All right, I think we did it. Uh, thanks again for, uh, for working things out with the, and getting together with the Block Association. And, and thank you for your patience tonight and waiting to be the last one called. Um, and um, I'm gonna put an end to the application, but thanks again, guys, okay? Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, so everybody on the committee will take a, a slight break, okay? And we'll be back, thanks.
Hey, David, what's up? Do I have a boat? Wait David, I can't talk to you while you. David, you put your put your mute put yourself on mute, okay? There you go. Thanks. Sorry, that was a bylaws question. That was funny. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often that happens. Sorry you get about these weird calls out of nowhere <laughs> asking me questions. I was just checking up on our new bylaws. Uh, yes, I, I yes. wasn't going to vote anyway because, uh, but I, I thought that I had a vote, but I wasn't sure. Anyway. No, I don't. David, you always have a vote. <laughs> Cost me plenty of money to, for you to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Um, yeah, I don't want to push everybody yet. We can take a little bit more of a break here if you want. Just everybody let me know when they're ready. I'm here, Bob. Oh, great. Great, Dr. Smith. And it's 10 o'clock, so not too late. Mar, I just want to check to make sure you're here. She is, Don't but she you is. dare tempt the gods. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I see everybody, uh, but Mar, are you there? Okay. I'm here. Okay, I thought so, I thought so. Okay, um, great. So we're gonna start, um, let's go in order. Uh, with, and so, so Mar, you were not here for one of the applications? Um, I heard part of all of them. There was one that I missed part of. I heard all of them, but there was one that I missed part of. It was, yeah. I think, the second one around seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. So it was the one after Hudson Square Services. Yes. Um, yeah, that was the. Good. That, John, yeah. Wait, I, two thirty-two. Yes. Yes. I, two, I have two questions, Bob. I actually have three questions, Bob. Before we sure. begin, did sure. How Noodle, Madame Ju's Kitchen, did what happened to that? Yeah, they they got uh they got laid over, uh, okay. and what I what I did was I put in the in the Google uh, Drive under the name I say layover withdrawn. Um, okay. Yeah, they okay. were. I, that, I, I should have said that at the very beginning they were they were last second. One was last second layover the uh, uh, later today. Um, yeah, that I must have been after. And should Leaf be here in this space, Donna? <laughs> No, we're, we're gonna we'll put Leaf back down, but Leaf, you can still listen. We just uh, I'm putting him back down now. Sorry. Yeah, this is this is our business. Is, yeah, but Leaf, uh, hopefully you're okay. still there. Okay. All right. And um, how many? How many are we? What's yeah, the, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're seven. seven. We're seven. Okay. okay. Thank you. So number one, Hudson Square Services, uh, with the rooftop, second time in. Um, I think the um, the main issue was the music on the rooftop. Uh, I will say that uh, for those of you that were not there, um, the there are speakers uh, on the rooftop, and uh, when you were up there, uh, they were actually set at the the level that was recommended uh, by the um, uh, sound engineer. Yeah, I can't remember the sound engineer. I can't remember his name right now, but the Acoustalog 
uh, he was there uh, up on the rooftop and measured the, the sound music that was coming out of him. Uh, you know, the, the speakers are pointed inward and there is a glass partition. Um, and so I, I didn't feel as if the music at, at the very, the background level was um, the kind that you would, would project. Uh, so obviously the music and the live music and the music on the inside was more concerning to me than, than on the outside, simply based on what I was hearing uh, there. Um, and I don't know what other people uh, thought uh, uh, that were on the trip uh, or made the visit with me, um, but that was my impression. I just wanted to relay that on to other people. I mean, it, it's, a, it's really a beautiful uh, view from there, uh, three different sides. It, it could, as Carter had indicated, it could be an extremely popular location if allowed to be that way. Uh, so the concern of the future, uh, I think, was real, uh, simply because of, I mean, it's just an amazing location. Bob, can so, you just share who the other members of the committee were who visited sure. the place? Yeah, we had quite a few. Adana was there, Susan was there, and uh, and so was uh, Brian. Brian. And, and Carter. Carter was there, too. So we had we had a good number of people. Yeah, I think that's it, right? There was no, that, that's yep. it. Yeah. So and you're uh, you're right about the speakers. I mean, the 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 it was actually very fortunate that there was music playing because you could tell based on that volume, it wasn't going to travel beyond the deck area. I really felt like it was it wasn't something that could be you know disruptive to other people. Think Carter, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I I think that we need to have just specific stipulations here with a number on the decibels, um, you know, that the sound limiter, um, I think that, that, you know, the offer of no live music that needs to be written just to, as, as Dr. Smith had raised, it, it is not a shall issue type of thing when they return. That's an evaluation done done later. But I that that needs to be you know we should probably discuss that because I th my, that my, wasn't framed particularly my, well um, at at that time. Yeah. Um, my plan just to go specific on that on the stipulations card. My plan was. To actually the, the recommendations that are in the acoustic log, which talks exactly about dBs and what the background music dB levels are and the limiters, will actually be incorporated into the stipulations itself. So right. I was just I, I mean I and and then also that there's an annual um, inspection by uh, you know the sound engineer um, to make sure that all the uh, Everything is still set up appropriately, particularly. I didn't, I didn't the see numbers. that. That's in there also in the report because I didn't know. No, that. it's not. I'm I'm raising it because okay. we've learned uh, just because there's a plan, there's no bearing on whether it's followed or not. Um, that has come up at a few different places, um, and then that there's no other sound equipment that's ever used outside you know, as far as, uh, you know, that's, that's, and these are not necessarily, th these are frameworks within, you know, allowing, um, I think they're important in case there is an evolution. And, you know, what I had said during the original meeting, you know, I, you know, this, this, this location has many different potentials. And so documenting exactly what is and isn't allowed will, avoid future issues and and doing it um very clearly i think is is uh is very important and despite um the the applicant stating that there are no residential units there are to the north and we saw those when we were there you could clearly see a line of sight view into a row of you know you know high end uh, high end apartment buildings um just to the north i don't know what what address they what address they are and you know just as anybody who's who spent any time outdoors you know once once you get up high the sound travels directly line of sight you know that's that's a big concern so you know despite being told it's not important etc you know that's 
you know, they, if they if they have anything with any, any excess volume, it it would be audible um, in those other areas because there's uh, nothing that sort of breaks down the noise. There's no other noise generation at that height. So, to me, that those are the the main issues are just defining um, the parameters of whatever is generating sound and obviously you can't control people um so so that's the that would be the remaining sound that might be audible and the only real reason people raise their voices is because people have turned the music up in the background so it uh it all lends itself but um the other aspect uh which was unique on the space and this is for the people who who didn't um join us on the visit is that it's very long and narrow on the interior and, and the exterior, but the at the exterior, the ends sort of uh, are larger where the, the building structure, it's, it's a, there's setbacks from the, from the edge of the building. And so the ends were actually um, beyond the building structure where you go inside. So, so it's, uh, it has a very high capacity, but not so much for, in organized events. It would be much more for a large sprawling event. And then uh, we were also told just um, in inclement weather, one of the reasons that it can't be booked too uh, fully uh, for accommodations is because if there's any inclement weather, people can't all be inside because it's just not um, big enough. And uh, Brian, do you have your hand up? I can't see. Yes. Great, go ahead, Brian. So Alan Firestein, the acoustical engineer did uh, give us a lot of information at the uh, meeting. And so I would agree with Carter's assessment that we need to put in some definitive terminology uh, for uh, keeping everything in check. But uh, the existing uh, music level that was displayed during our visit was certainly within the background noise definition. And by the way, I, it is interesting that we don't require a sound engineer or acoustical engineer to verify every restaurant that it comes before us to say that they're going to have background music. Um, so I know that we're we're making this a special case because it's an outdoor space. And so that's, that justifies that stipulation. But um, I think that uh, the acoustical engineer mentioned that these, the, the glass railings around the entire perimeter and the fact that it's a long and narrow uh, exterior terrace space uh, means that there's not a, huge conglomeration of people. They're going to be spread out. And those glass railings do act as acoustical barriers for the sound that escapes um, or would go over the railings. That's that's something else. But it is, uh, it is quite a distance from that terrace to the nearest building. I think that they owners or the landlords there would have done themselves a ser service if they had shown not just the, that level of terrace, but how that terrace related to the whole building footprint. It's like a wedding cake building uh, where there's, there's lots of lower terraces. It's stepping back. So the building is, first of all, much bigger than the space that we visited. And uh, so anyway, it's, I think with their acceptance of no live music outdoors uh, says a lot. And um, I think that with the other stipulations that, that Carter mentioned, I think that would be satisfactory for me. Great, thanks Brian. And Donna, do you have your hand up too? Yeah, I just had my hand up too, just to say that um, to Carter's point, it, 
there are residences i think it's on the west side more so on the on the west like the sound up there can carry i think it's really important about the live music so i'm i'm glad they did that we need to have in our stipulations that al comes back and tests the system before they open once it's put in place in addition to coming back and coincidentally dr smith this is more for you because you've shown the interest in who was there and and what we heard um as Brian, they have the glass railing, then they also have a lot of planters around the railing. So unlike other places that we've seen, it is not, in most instances, easy for people to be right next to the railings um, or speakers to be right next to the railings. These speakers are small speakers that are put inside the plantings that are done next to the railings, and then there is seating next to the plantings, aside from the place that is where Carter was pointing out on that western side where, where there doesn't seem to be plantings and is more of a glass railing where, where a group of people can more congregate. Um, when we were there, Al, Al Farstein was also there and the music they were playing, which he did not arrange for them to be playing, but he did go out there and read it, seemed to be at the decibel levels that he has in his report. And he said, as long as they stick to those decibel levels, uh, it's fine. It sounded like background music. My concern to myself personally is what is background music when you have 20 people out there versus 100 people out there? And that's why I think it's important that we put in there to stick to what he said in his report, which is what we heard when we were out there. Uh, and that's all I, I have to say about it. I'm just really glad they got rid of the live music outside at this point. Okay. So I'm, I'm sensing denying less. Dr. Smith has her hand up. Oh, I didn't see that. Go ahead, Dr. Smith. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for your, your, your collective comments. I am um, very concerned that it's, we sort of entertain the idea and then they agree to say, okay, we'll, we'll try it for one year and not do you know, not have any music. Of course, we are not going to be, the issue I think is going to be one of uh, who's going to be checking on them. I know I'm not going to go over there. Maybe you guys might stop by every now and then. Compliance is, would be an issue for me, but more importantly, <clears throat> just cannot, I can't in good conscience vote for any kind of, even though, yeah, we, we don't generally have music. We've, we've said to everybody that has come to us thus far, no music on the roof. Is that correct? And Carter, you know that that, that is that correct? And we've made no exceptions to my knowledge, have we? There is one exception, which is the standard hotel, I believe. And when and, but, but I think that contemporarily, I believe that there are some that have it but um they nothing um particularly recent recently um the the, the difference actually that's not true i take it back i i the arlo might which is uh, just a couple blocks to the west i can't remember yeah that's the one i that's the one i think of, but that's even before my time i could have sworn there was no you were up there you were up there Bob, we you did a walkthrough. You, you might forget Bob because it was so cold, but we did a walkthrough of that. Oh, hotel. that one. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. That, I was thinking two blocks the other direction. And that was also with Al, if I remember correctly. But I, I think that they have a low volume of music there. So let me ask to understand. So is everybody agreeing? To their not having music um, for one year is that what the is that what the, the the issue is here when you say you're getting ready to call the question, Bob? Yeah, no, sure. No, I'm glad you brought that up because I I think that they just there's not wait a year. They're, they no, they're free they to return it. at any time for any reconsideration. But I I am not comfortable putting any language like that, which has some sort of a guarantee. No, we shouldn't be in a date. position to guarantee anything. Even yeah. if I don't no, no. think we guaranteed anything. We, yeah, no. no. I think it's simply that 
we may expect them after a year to come back and seek an alteration. But, but, but I may see alteration, not. Susan, an alteration for what? To have music? Oh. What would the alteration be? Would be my question since to, to, to that comment. Well, if, if they if if they're agreeing to not have outdoor music, the alteration would be to have maybe acoustic music or whatever. But we didn't make them a promise. Oh, hold off for a year and then you can do it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I made it very clear to them. No promise. Uh, and there they no would promise. and they would do it. So there is no promise and there is no indication a year from now. They, they can come back anytime they want for anything. Uh, but no promises were made and, that, and we're better off just leaving it like that, which is, which is what you always say, Dr. Smith. I, I just want to be very clear on this. What this is, is no live music out on the roof. We're, we did not say no music out on the roof. Right, correct. That, is, I mean, I oh, did, but that I, was my question. Okay. That's what I heard her question. That's my I question, I Donna. To be very yep. clear on that. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank right. you for that clarification before. Yeah, I and no promises, no promises were made. And we would said exactly that. So, but, um, okay, so. But the, but the distinction that was just made by Donna gives more clarity for me. Yeah. We have to be careful because even sometimes we don't say it, the way we sometimes speak to, to some applicants or respond, it might give it the impression that they can come back. And then when they come back, they expect you know, everything's, they are going to get what they want because they were able to to do whatever they said they were going to do, whatever was promised. So that's, that, that's my concern. That's neither here nor there here. But I'm not saying that you made a, made a promise or anything. I was, Donna made the clarification for me. No live yes. music for us. <coughs> correct? Yes. No okay. live music, okay, with piped in music into the speakers that they have outside set at the levels that Acoustalog set. Okay. okay. So, so Shirley, to answer your question, I just looked up what's now the Arlo Hotel, then was the Tommy Hotel, it's just to the west. It's uh, for What were those years, do you remember? Do you, 2015. The document. It was 2015 and the, the rooftop exterior the music will be ambient background music only, i.e. very low background music limited to 78 dBA as indicated in sound report. Notwithstanding this requirement, which may be more restrictive at no time will New York City noise regulations be violated. It is also understood that at no time will any music from the roof become a quality of life issue or impact the nearby community and the licensee will make best efforts to resolve complaints. And then there will also be a master sound limiter uh, installed and calibrated by an acoustical engineer uh, with levels to remain unchanged and limiter secured to avoid tampering with exclusive control by uh, senior hotel restaurant management only. Okay. And Donna, are those going to be some issues in the, not Donna, I'm sorry, Rob, Bob, is that going to be some issues in the result, like stipulations like that? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll borrow that language. If you think that language is great. That language, yeah, I think that language would be good. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I, I was going to uh, vote no, but I, I've, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm changing my vote to yes. Denial. Great. Us. great. So are we uh, unanimous denying less on, on this one? Yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, number two, uh, I will not count Mar. We'll move, it is uh, the, <coughs> the 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 Fourteenth Street, the two two three two Fourteenth Street between us reconsideration last month. The record.